I love Daft Punk. I, I just like, wow, the sa- the noise sounds nice. <laughs> like I like the noise. You know what I mean? Is that weird? Is that weird? Yes, am it I, is weird. Am I weird? It I'm is very weird. weird. Yeah. yeah. I know. I, I think you just basically described music in in <laughs> in the most like I think I, I think bare I, bones monkey brain. It is terms. a bunch of noises <laughs> put together. Think, uh, your parents like watch Trash Taste and yes. like they comment on every little thing you do now. My my mum told me that like to stop putting my hand near my face. <laughs> and for the past like five episodes, I've tried to avoid putting my hand anywhere near my mouth. Yeah, my mum's like, oh, you wore shorts this episode. The entire world knows you're wearing shorts this episode, by the way. Why dirty, are you wearing shorts? How does dirty she know that? Shorts you, boy. Your legs don't show. <laughs> I, I didn't know either, but apparently on camera, they showed it when I sat on this side. She's so. like, enhance, enhance. Yeah. <laughs> my mom gave me shit whenever I was saying that British food is awful. And that <laughs> I was neglected growing up because I was fed beans and toast often. It's true though, <laughs> mum. But anyway, welcome to this episode of Trash Taste, and <laughs> I'm your boy Connor. <laughs> I, I forgot what I was supposed to say with I Joey. Your and boy. I'm your boy because I couldn't figure the rest of the words. It's I, your boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with the boy. <laughs> That's it. That's and um, the, the boy. other boy. Uh, and t- together we are the boys. The boys. <laughs> <laughs> that was had to be one of the best intros. I, yeah. I just you know when you like you're autopiloting the intro and then you just realize halfway through that you're autopiloting the intro and then you're like taking it over and you're like, oh wait, I should have just autopiloted. Because like being on a podcast, um, normally if I'm having a normal conversation sometimes and I know like, I, I know sometimes I know what, when I start a sentence, I know how I'm gonna end the sentence. But yeah. when you're on a podcast, you always have to finish the sentence even if you kind of realize halfway through yeah. that you're not yeah, making yeah, any like, sense. I'm just, like, I'm just like, okay, I'm gonna have to say something because I've been silent for the past two minutes, but I don't know how to start it or how to end it where this is going. Just, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, you're right, you're yeah. right. <laughs> so gentlemen, I thought, considering I, I believe we all watched Japan Sinks recently. That was yeah. a nice little coinky dink there. Which, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. We all watched it separately. I didn't know you guys were watching it. We all didn't, we didn't make an effort to all watch it. We yeah. all just like, oh, we all just watched well, it. We all just turned on Netflix and yeah. was like, oh, Okay, yeah. it's on, and, cool. Uh, it came out recently of the time of recording, but yes. so by the time you're seeing this, it might be probably like, like three or four days ago. Yeah, something, yeah, like, something that. like that. Yeah, yeah, for us. Um, but so to explain what uh, yes, Japan Sinks is, uh, since we're going to be doing uh, some kind of discussion around it, it's the new Masaki Yuasa anime um, that was released on Netflix, and it's basically about a giant earthquake that happens in Japan. Um, and after that earthquake happened, Japan starts sinking, I guess. Yeah, so for like. people living in Japan, it is anxiety the anime, essentially. <laughs> Dude, okay, first of all, before we get into talking it, in the very first episode, they play the actual- The sound, uh, they play the, the earthquake <laughs> sound. <laughs> this sound that you're hearing here. Like, did, we, did we like, I don't know if it's I just checked me. my phone Yeah, I checked my phone. I was like, where's my phone? <laughs> and, I, and I turned that shit down. Cause I was like, fuck, what if my neighbors here? Yeah. They, they start freaking out. Like they're gonna think there's an actual earthquake. They're elderly, but you know, below me. Yeah. Fuck, that made me shit myself. That gave me but, so no, much like, anxiety. The, the first episode of them portraying the earthquake happening, mm. I was really impressed at how realistic it felt. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Cause I probably would would have reacted the exact same way it was all the characters, right? You know, when you hear that earthquake, like notification now, and then you just kind of block it out. You're like, oh, whatever. It's probably yeah, yeah. it's probably a small earthquake because yeah. once you've been through about ten earthquakes in Japan, which you will, yeah, which which you will. <laughs> you, you just you just you hear this notification, and it's just like another day of the. the- Unfor- unfortunately, though, every time at least I have heard that notification, it's never been the case of ah, oh, whatever. It's probably just a small earthquake because it always happens at like five in the morning, <laughs> yeah, yeah. and it's the thing I wake up to. Imagine just having you're just having a nice sleep wherever you are. And it's like 4.30 in the morning. And then suddenly you hear this absolutely anxiety inducing yeah. alarm because you just hear the siren, but they don't say like, if it's strong or yeah. if it's weak. It, it just <laughs> says, it just says, brace yourself. Yeah, yeah. Like, just basically brace yourself. Zoot, zoot, yeah. zoot, zoot. Hold on to your butt, it might be strong. And it's, I already hate waking up to the sound of an alarm, but when it's an alarm where it's like, oh, I might die. Yeah. yeah. Then it's, oh, it's the worst. I, I had, I was enjoying the first episode so much because again, there was this, you know, as you said, it's a really realistic portrayal. Yeah. But the moment I hear that sound, I just, I don't know. I don't get anxiety often, but- I, I went like the caveman SpongeBob meme. And <laughs> 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 like, they do it like three times. Yeah, uh, yeah, And I'm like, yeah. stop doing this. <laughs> Please use like, like parody noise, like yeah. or something. Like, <laughs> Could you imagine though, like, especially in that first episode, you know, when that second big wave hits. Yeah. 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 Do you think, 
something like that is going to happen. Well, didn't they, it's like a lot of, again, I should have done research for this episode, but I swear there's been a few scientific predictions that are like, there's going to be a mega quake within like 30 or 50 years. Something like that. I mean, there has to be, right? Because yeah. I mean, we, the fucking planets, like not planets, the, the country's all panjayed away, right? That doesn't just happen. Right, yeah, yeah. Right. There has to be stuff that's moving constantly. So yeah, inevitably I mean, like, something big's gonna happen. Inevitably, whether it's in our lifetime or like a yeah, children's yeah. lifetime or fucking great, great, yeah, great yeah. grandchildren's lifetime, it's gonna happen somewhere. Like a mega quake, yeah. Like, yeah. like a mega quake, you know. It's, it's an interesting idea to explore that there's probably gonna be some massive kind yeah. of event that's gonna happen sometime because in the- Is there like, I, I don't know about, I'm sure Thailand has earthquakes, right? Not really. Oh, I mean, really? I, I Japan think- Japan is literally on the fault line. Yeah. Like the whole yeah. country is on yeah. the fault yeah. line. Yeah. Like, okay, do you, do you guys remember your very first earthquake experience? Yeah. Yeah. The, yeah. That, that was because, okay, we, we're from the UK. Like, yeah. It is literally the safest place on earth. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I was about to say, you guys don't get earthquakes, right? Yeah. No, no, we're no. like, we're like the furthest away from like any fault line of like any country. <laughs> no, like, right. we, we, we're like natural, We've had one or two. natural disasters in the UK is like non existent. It's like running out of tea. Like, like, like that's like a, England, <laughs> England, England is so fucking safe. You'd have to try really hard to get yourself killed in England by nature. <laughs> yeah, you really do have to go out of your way. Like, you know, yeah, because, like, because Australia, we don't have earthquakes at all. Or, any, no, but or everything else like will just yeah, kill but you. We have, you know, bushfires and stuff like that. And of yeah. course our, our animals are just yeah. out for yeah. blood. But you guys don't even have dangerous animals. Or no, we right don't. Now, right? That's why I'm convinced there's so many like famous British explorers because they must have been so fucking bored of the UK. <laughs> like, oh, it's another fucking squirrel. Who'd have thought? Like, like it's, it's a all- bigger squirrel. <laughs> yeah. like, talking to Americans and Canadians who go camping and they have to worry about bears and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. And I remember going camping in England and I'm just like, oh yeah, like I guess we have to worry about deers. I guess deers yeah. can be dangerous. And <laughs> I feel like the biggest worry in the UK is how much alcohol do I bring? Like, <laughs> like how much alcohol is the right amount of alcohol? How much alcohol and toilet paper do I bring? <laughs> yeah. That's always the worry. Cause it's like, I got to carry two liters of water, 10 liters of alcohol. So we gotta like try and bounce this out somehow. Like, like, yeah. yeah. I don't know, I remember my very first earthquake experience wasn't in Japan. It was actually in America during AX. Oh yeah. Oh, last AX year. 28, well not last year now. Yeah. Was, no. Oh no, it is last yeah, year. Last year. Yeah, 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 last year's AX, so 2019 AX. And I remember, I remember- That was your first one? Yeah, that was, that was my, my very was my first, first one. Really? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. So yeah, to explain, when we were at AX last year, we went through a magnitude is it seven? Earthquake? It was six or seven. But it was far like away. That. So it wasn't yeah. awful, but it was still, I mean, we were- it, it still is the strongest earthquake I've been in, even after moving to Japan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember I was on like the 64th yeah, we floor we all or something. Were. <laughs> and it, it's, it was like such a humbling experience because yeah. at first I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. Because I, 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 I remember standing up and I felt a bit dizzy and I was like, what the fuck's going on? Am I just like really fatigued? Am I hung over? What's going on? Mm. So I, I, go, I go up to the window, right? Just imagine you're going up to the window on the 64th floor of a skyscraper. And then you look down and then you see the fucking building just shift yeah, like yeah. that. And it was just like this. <laughs> Like uh, I, I immediately, I've never felt vertigo so fast, and I immediately just pins myself against the wall, just being like, "Shit, shit, this is an earthquake." Yeah. This I'm, su- is I'm a surprised fucking earthquake. you had the balls to go towards a window. Be- I, I, because I didn't know it was an earthquake. I right. just thought I was just dizzy or drunk <laughs> or something. I, I mean, the first one because it was like three that weekend. Was yeah, that? no, there was two. Two, 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 two in the. It was in the same day, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So hmm. the first one, I was in the elevator while it was oh, happening, my God. and the elevator was shaking a lot more than I thought it should have been shaking. Right. And I'm pretty sure there's a Japanese woman in there who was from one of the stands yeah. and, and she looked fucking terrified. Oh yeah. And I was like, we're nearly near the bottom. I'm sure it'll be fine. Like, <laughs> I, we're like 10 floors. I'm sure we got this. But then the second one was, I was with you. Yeah, yeah, That yeah. was so fun. We, you want to tell that story? <laughs> you, you should tell. You okay, should okay. So the second earthquake that happened, I think it was only a Maybe a couple of hours after, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I, I think literally it was like, just rushed to your hotel room because I was busy. That's right. Yeah, that's it was right. like that night. Yeah, it was It was you, me, Aki, and our friend Nabi. Mm. And we were just chilling in our hotel room. We were just talking about what we were going to do that night. Because I think it was- We were going to uh, a party. We were going to go to a party. Yeah. And so we were just chilling before the party started. And, you know, the second earthquake comes through. And it was, I think it was stronger than the first one, wasn't it? I think so. Something like that. But either way, very strong. Like at least magnitude six from what I remember. I think it was 7.1 that earthquake. I think that was the that seven, was, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. yeah. And uh, 
and of course it was an earthquake. I'm used to it. Uh, obviously, everybody else wasn't. Yeah. So we quickly ran out, and we were at the very, very top. I think it was like the 68th or 69th yeah, floor yeah. or something of that of that hotel. And <laughs> and even amidst all the panic. Connor and my friend Navi, they were eating- uh, I was eating Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A, like <laughs> Chick-fil-A nuggets. And Connor and Navi just kind of looked at each other and went, well, if I'm going to die, might as well finish off yeah. these nuggets. <laughs> <laughs> like, e- like everyone was panicking. I remember there was literally that like stereotypical American family. It was one du- one like white guy with like three w- daughters. Like get get down to the floor, get down to the bottom floor daughters. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to direct you. And I'm there with like my nuggets walking past him. So I mean, like, ah, I mean, it's, it's pretty fine. I got if, about, yeah, go on, go on. If I'm going to die, at least I'm going to die with nugs in my hands. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we, were like, we were like rushing down the stairs. We got like yeah. 20 floors down. And I was like, I'm not, you know what? I. I don't want to do any more physical exercise. I think <laughs> I think I've done enough. So yeah. I did a move, which is probably not a pro gamer move. I was like, you know what? The shaking stopped like two minutes ago. I'm gonna get the elevator. Yeah. Like, I'm, like, there is 50 more floors and I would rather die literally than get these stairs. And I went to the elevator, but, but the weird configuration of this hotel, you had to go back to the top. Yeah, to, and then to go, go down, down again, yeah. So that means then I was like, all right, well, the elevators are still working. They should have been stopped. They were still working. So I was like, okay. So I go back from the 50th floor, which I just walked down the, from the 70th yeah. to the 50th. <laughs> I walked all the way down and I was like, okay, I'm gonna go back up to the 70th floor. I go to get the elevator to go all the way down and they're blocking it off. Yeah. <laughs> they're like, you can't go until it's safe. And I'm like, Fuck. Meanwhile, our other friend was just like, fuck it. I'm going to walk yeah, all the way down. The he way sprinted down. all the way down. And he's just waiting at the bottom and he calls me. He's like, Where are, you? are you guys alive? <laughs> yeah, Cause I convinced them. I'm like, listen guys, you guys can keep walking. I'm getting yeah. the elevator. And then they were like, okay. Well, we'll come no, no, I came yeah. with you. Yeah, I, yeah, you yeah, yeah, I was like, well, great. We're back. I guess we <laughs> ran down 24s for no reason. <laughs> it was so scary though. Cause I remember like, I was a little, I wasn't worried because, you know, the doors were closing and opening on their yeah. own. I thought that's yeah. okay. I can deal with that. Mm. What I didn't like anticipate was when I looked out the building, I could literally see the building opposite us. We yeah. were going like this. Yeah, yeah, we were, yeah. Like, parallaxing. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, that's not right. <laughs> <laughs> that's not right. Like bu- buildings shouldn't do that. No, Cause I remember it was, it was well, like, to me, it was a really humbling experience. Just at that moment, I was like, my life is not in my own hands. Yeah. Like mm. if this building collapses, yeah. there is literally nothing I can do. Cause you know, when you feel like something bad happens, you feel like you have some some kind of control. Like mm. you, you might see a car coming and you, you think, you know, maybe I can jump out of the way of this. There was like, if the building was just yeah, not the designed. Falls. Like logically I knew this building was designed to withstand earthquakes, mm. but in my heart, I was like, okay, at this moment, I'm just putting my faith in the engineers and the builders <laughs> that they've done their job fucking correctly. Cause if they haven't, I'm dead. Yeah, and there's rip. literally nothing I can do about it. And I I, I guess that was like a first for me. You know, yeah. I, I, I'd, I'd never been in that kind of situation where I had just, my my life was in the was in the hands of like completely something, some other yeah. external. To be fair, I've experienced a lot of earthquakes in my life, but being on a, the 69th, 17th floor was definitely yeah. a first for me. Yeah, you know, I've been on you know apart. I've been in apartment buildings that are like 10, 20 floors high, and that yeah. was still scary because again, the whole thing is shaking. I have to keep telling myself it's good that it's shaking. It's yeah. good that it's shaking. Um, but my first, I think, the scariest earthquake experience I had was uh, it was in Japan, obviously, um, and it was up north where my grandma lives. Right. Um, and it was where you know the giant earthquake of 2011 hit essentially. Yeah. So that is that place like a hot spot yeah, for yeah, massive yeah. earthquakes. Um, and uh, and I was there, I was in some kind of like a uh, DVD rental place, mm-hmm. like a really old DVD rental place near there with my sister. And suddenly I think it was like a magnitude seven and a half or something like that, Jeez, really, right. really big. It was so big in fact that all of the DVDs and books on the shelves just flew out. Oh, wow. And wow. me and I had to like grab my sister's hand and just fucking get the hell out of there. Wow. And but we couldn't go all the way out because the shop assistant was like, don't go out into the street because if shit a street, falls. if a shit falls, then you're dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we had to kind of stand in the door frame yeah, of yeah, the yeah. shop and just kind of wait for it to settle down. And yeah, that was definitely a lot scarier because it, being on, the, I thought being on a building was scary. Right. Being on the ground floor, <laughs> like yeah. on the street in yeah. something yeah. that big yeah, is yeah, really yeah. scary. Yeah, Cause people were running out and I thought that's kind of dumb because yeah. the building's 
really safe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Running out, you don't know what could like or fall. could fall exactly. on you. Exactly. Yeah. You know, if a traffic light or a yeah. you know a street light yeah. falls on you, then you know. Really I think it's just, it's that sense of control. You know that yeah, you yeah. think you have, even though statistically you you are actually safer in the building. Yeah, the, the buildings are designed. At least the newer ones, I think. Like, I mean, that was a really big yeah. hotel, and it's they're mainly designed for like thirteen magnitude earthquakes. Yeah, yeah. like. They're pretty fucking sturdy things. Speaking of sense of control though, <laughs> uh, the characters in Japan sinks have none. <laughs> <laughs> okay. My God, can okay. we go back to that? Yeah. No, no, I, yeah. Are we gonna, are we gonna spoil things? Is this gonna be the first spoiler warning that we need to do? We've, we've had a spoiler warning before. Okay, well, there'll be a spoiler warning on screen. We're gonna spoil things. I guess, it's only 10 episodes. It's on Netflix. Go watch go it. Go watch it. It's great. Uh, if you don't care about being spoiled, feel free to watch. Yeah. Um, I hate the main girl so much. <laughs> I could not stand her. I, I, I didn't mind her at first, but then when she started to get a bit whingy, <sighs> Later on, can, can I? Can I? Okay, to, to get my to get my opinions out of the way, um, what what do you guys think of the series overall? I'm glad that we finally have some good propaganda for YouTubers. Like, <laughs> I'm glad that we need more YouTube propaganda. We YouTubers more, are good guys. We need more OP YouTuber <laughs> characters. A, dude, I'm so glad. I was like, wow, he's a YouTuber and he's not an asshole. This is no, amazing. no, no, because this is amazing. Because okay, so, so there's a character <laughs> in uh in in Japan sinks that is just a YouTuber. And he's a YouTuber who's a fucking superhuman because yeah. he can do everything. He's mad Where Chad. did he get a tank from? <laughs> where did the tank come from? He, he, We're uh, just not gonna explain I where love, he got a tank. I love how he, no, it, not even that, but like the, the way that he enters in that fucking fan propelled. Like, yeah, I know. And he's just like, yeah, this is mine. I bought it with my YouTube ad rem. And it's like, what videos are you uploading? Like, you're really telling me you're gonna film a video of Okinawa sinking and that shit's gonna be monetized? <laughs> yeah. Come on. Millions of people die, monetized, <laughs> fuck off. No way. Can we just appreciate that the character is basically Felix, PewDiePie, if he just He's had like- He's like white head <laughs> Felix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, like the, the time when Felix had the really, really uh, yes, blonde I hair. remember when I met Felix and when he came in on his- um, <laughs> sort of motorized Hey guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the idealized vision of PewDiePie. Like yeah. this is this is his final form, right? <laughs> Just rocks in I'm a tank. Gonna, I would, how, how we see PewDiePie. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if he changes his profile picture to that character Dude. next because it was Rio from yeah, Devil May Cry for the longest I thought time. It's Rio. It's Rio. Yeah, it's it's Rio. Rio. It looks like Rio. <laughs> yeah. But I guess when I saw that, and as you said, it was probably one of the first times that a YouTuber has been kind of viewed in a lot any, more of a any positive form of light. Positive fashion. Yeah. <laughs> like, it really goes to show me that I think Masaki Yus is a fan of YouTube. Yeah. yeah. It just it just disappointed me that in his final scene. Yeah. He didn't he didn't send them off by going, and don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, very unrealistic. There was never a, a, a pull to sub There was not one sponsorship really no. in the whole thing. Come on. No rage shadow. <laughs> I, want, I want to imagine yeah. him, he comes flying in the away, truck. Uh, him flying away, like freezing half to death in the stratosphere. And he's like, spots my rage shadow. <laughs> Very unrealistic. Yeah. But, oh, so okay, good. I'm gonna, what, what, out of 10, was it, or was it good or bad? What do you guys okay, think? Okay, I'm not gonna say that it was a 10. I'm, I'm gonna give it like a solid seven. I thought it was like a four or five. Really? You didn't like it? Nah, I didn't like it either. Okay, here's his- I, I couldn't stop watching it, Yeah, but I, I didn't, there's so many things I hated. Right. It, okay, here's the thing. This, the way, this is like a proper mixed bag for me. Mm. Yeah, it's, same. I, the way I would describe it is that it's a four out of 10 series with uh, some 10 out of 10 scenes. Okay, it's, that's, fair. It's, that's fair. It was really weird because some scenes were fucking amazing. It yeah, was like yeah. peak Yuasa. First two episodes, absolute bangers. No, exactly. Yeah, right? yeah. And like some of the scenes in like last two episodes, absolute bangers mm. as well. Like like the scene, the scenes with the YouTuber and like some some of the death scenes. Oh, I the scene where the guy's running. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Thing. I, don't, I don't know what Yuasa has about that making was em yeah. emotional running scenes, yeah. but it's- and <laughs> And the father's death completely caught me off guard. Oh, yeah, dude, yeah. that, that ruined yeah. me. And I, I was thought, like, oh, cool. The one character I liked yeah. is dead <laughs> in I, I episode yeah. two. <laughs> I literally thought like, wow, this, like after I finished episode two, I thought like this could be a 10 out of 10 if they keep up with like yeah. how good this is. Mm -hmm. And then- And then we went into the cult. Yeah, and then they got to the cult. <laughs> and I was like, Oh no, this is awful. <laughs> this is actually awful. Like, I, the, the, the cult arc for me was so bittersweet because as a massive fan of US's stuff, I'm like, oh, this is so US. But there's, there's a scene when- What the fuck was the cult yeah, arc? I, what the fuck was it? I, okay. You okay, got to make the 360 I, no scope That bro. was amazing. That was amazing. <laughs> was, that, that wasn't the part where I laughed most. You know the part where I laughed most was? <laughs> the kid dying. <laughs> <laughs> 
I was just watching it dead serious and the kid just gets fucking destroyed by this rock. Yeah. And I literally just let out like a- <laughs> <laughs> it, it, was, it was just like, it was so perfect comedic timing. It was just, he turns around and it's like, oh, car, son. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, it was like slapstick comedy. No, it was. What was that? What? It was. No, because I remember I was like properly, I was properly invested in the no series. Shame. Like first two episodes, I probably properly invested. And then like, some things just fell off. Like as, as, the, as the series went on, right? Because mm. like, I remember their father dying. And it was, he, di he died in a really horrific fucking way. Mm. Yeah. And then nobody really just acknowledged that. They had yeah, like, they had yeah like, it just cuts, doesn't it? Yeah, they had like one conversation. It's like, oh, you, you, you're forgetting dad. And then they just like the ne next scene, like happy go lucky fucking shopping in, in a supermarket. And I'm just like, like if, if that was real, I, I wouldn't be able to say anything for like the next five days. Let yeah, alone, yeah, yeah, let exactly. alone even think about. And yet for some reason, every other character that dies after that, they have like a full on emotional scene that yeah, just drags was, out was. like crazy, right? Yeah. Yeah, it, it, something just fell off about the characters. I, I don't know what it was about how they were written, but it just didn't, like sometimes they acted the way I would imagine people would act. And sometimes they just acted in a completely random way. Yeah. And then the cult, arc happened and I was, was like, awful, okay, arc. okay. Now, now, now we've gone from something feels off to this is just stupid. <laughs> so much needed explaining about that, like whole yeah. thing. Where were they getting all of this food from? I Where was so were they getting all of the weed? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so much weed. <laughs> like, <laughs> just fields of weed. And, and like in Japan, like yeah, you're, exactly. just, you're just gonna grow fields of weed. <laughs> also, they never in explain Japan. the fact that like the, the, the grounds where the cult stood wasn't affected by the tilting continental there was just shift. So much, there was so much stuff when it got to the cult arc where I was like, this is too much, too many holes for me to just like be like, this yeah. is okay. Cause at the end of it all, I think the only reason, I, I was trying to figure out, okay, what was the point of this cult arc? Like, like what were they trying <laughs> yeah, to build to? And I think the only thing that came out of this cult arc was just the fact that they got that Morse code talking professor out of there, right? Was, was, but why was he there? Like, it was, the, it was yeah. just, none of this was explained. No. It was just a slapstick comedy. You know? yeah, <laughs> that's, that's it a, was. Like, like, I remember watching the cult arc and you know that point when you're like really invested in the show and then you go, you, go, so you, you go from being invested to just laughing at how bad it's become? Yeah. It, that was the cult arc for me. And I couldn't get invested back into the show after that. It, yeah, it hurt too much after the cult arc happened. And the fact that they just were like, okay, if the old man is addicted to morphine, I'm fine with that. Yeah. But they didn't even build up to that at all. They could have showed some kind of, you know, right, right. like, they could have no, maybe shown the, him the, taking some pills. Or the something. fact that the old man shot that kid at the end of episode four, yeah, three, yeah, yeah. and then they were like, and then he, and then he was like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, whatever. Yeah. And I like, didn't mean to shoot you. Let yeah, me like, fix your Game Boy. Dude, you just fucking <laughs> shot my yeah, kid yeah. with the intent to kill him. It's like if he hadn't, didn't have his fucking DS, <laughs> like he, he would be dead. <laughs> and you're just gonna let him that, hang that was around. The, actually, the last PS Vita. To be fair though, at the end of episode four, when the kid got shot, I was like, oh, thank God he's dead. My no, God, I, that yeah. kid was fucking annoying. Okay, did you you watch, did you watch your sub or dubbed? I watched both. I watched sub. I, I, okay. I like. I, I literally. I was like. I watched the dub. Something fell off. I watched the sub. And for the first time in my fucking life, I I could not stand like the voice no, acting in the it sub. It was. It was really like. I get it that they're supposed to be like native in both. Yeah. But then I feel like they should have got people who are native in both. It's doable yeah. because when they, whenever he said, let's go, it's just like, that's not. Yeah, it sounds <laughs> Daddy. really off. Yeah. Or they could have even, or they could have even have just gotten someone with a similar voice type who speaks English. You know what I mean? What like, is it? What is it about? You also did this in Devil May Cry Baby as well, where Ryo's English was just Stop doing so this shit. Off Stop doing this and shit. And yet it's somehow like, like, they can't get, I, ma I made this joke on Twitter, but I think it was the second to last episode where they're in Russia <laughs> yeah. and they got yeah. those like three nurses who could speak perfect Russian and yet they can't get a single English yeah, speaking voice flawless. actor. Yeah. It was like, what? why? How is it so hard? Yeah, Cause in the dub, how do they deal with the, the do uh, bilingualness. They they didn't really. They just, the, the boy just always spoke English. So that, that's that's why Did they mention it at all that he could speak no, both? No, no. I mean like they, they kinda did. <laughs> I wanted them to just be like, I wanna meet my Okar son. <laughs> 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 it's just like a reverse. <laughs> but is it, is it like a huge plot point? Cause then later on when the uh, like the barrage comes with the Japanese only. Oh the, the Japanese KKK. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> which, is, okay, which the the whole, you know, the the dynamics of that boat, just the engineering stands of it were all hot Terrific. How yeah, that boat yeah. literally couldn't handle waves. Like waves could just come off. It literally burst it into flames. It was the dumbest. <laughs> For no reason. Like, uh, 
<laughs> oh my god! Sorry, I just got yeah. It was the, I got uh, yeah, yeah. the engineering. The, the more the yeah. more we're discussing this, the more I'm regretting giving it a seven. Uh, no, like, no, it, just, like the emotions it gave me were a ten. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 But, like, like let's 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 not forget that they also added a woman who could speak to the dead. That was just what was up with that? never what explained. Was up with that? Why? Why did they show us her I'm sex like, scene? The, like there was several points <laughs> in the cold talk. They show her sex scene. I don't need to see that <laughs> shit. No, no, there was two points I burst out laughing. One, one was the kid dying, and the second one was like the fucking Mexican. Standoff where she just brings a fucking samurai sword. Out <laughs> I was like, is this, Bill? is this Kill Bill? Is this a Kill Bill scene? That like, was such a Quentin Tarantino <laughs> scene where it's like, there's there's a guy with a bag full of gold bars with a gun, and she just rocks up with a samurai sword, and the guy just walks up the stairs is like, uh. And I'm just like, what am I watching? I thought I was watching like a disaster movie, and it's turned into fucking Kill Bill. Oh, it's so good. It was just, I couldn't stop taking sick. I couldn't stop laughing at that point. What, what did you guys think of the, the last episode? Really, it was a really, really fucking hated the last episode. Yeah, the last episode just kind of dragged out for a little bit too the long. The last episode was, uh, <laughs> remember when the Olympics was meant to happen right now? <laughs> well, this is, this is awkward. <laughs> Don't forget the Paralympics too. <laughs> yeah. Just gotta make sure. I mean, I'm, sh I'm sure it would have hit harder because the Olympics would be happening yeah, right now. Yeah. Yeah. If this was released right now, I'd be like, oh, that's that's a pro gamer move there you are. So I, I see I see you, but now, but now that the Olympics isn't happening. It was just one giant an ad for the Olympics. Oh no, it was. That's yeah. Japanese what, like, tourism. I, I, I didn't want to say that, but like it definitely like felt a little, little ad like. Yeah. like yeah. Look how amazing the Olympics are. And it's like, it's like, yeah, we know. Yeah. <laughs> we know how good the Olympics are or how good it yeah. should have been. Because I, I didn't like, maybe I, was, I wasn't paying attention to this, but I saw a lot of people commenting saying that the show was like very political at times. And I was thinking like, I don't know if it was that political. No. People are trying to put that on it. Like nah. I didn't get that. Did you get that vibe? No, not really. Uh, I mean, maybe, I, I, maybe they were talking about the rap scene. Uh, maybe, maybe, which I liked. I liked the rap. Scene. I liked the rap I scene. The rap that, that, that was a uh, this. This doesn't. This is a really random scene, but I, I'm all for it. It was yeah. a good I'm, scene. I'm yeah, it was it. random though. I was like, I don't know what this is, but we can keep doing. But it. it's such a you awesome move where yeah, you know yeah. he was just like, okay, I really want to tell people how much I love Japan, but how much Japan sucks, but not make it super political. Yeah. Freestyle rap, baby, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. So originally was the rap in Japanese in the Japanese yeah, dub. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Cause like, I, I didn't notice because I, at that point I was just purely watching the English dub mm. and they, it was all in English and it, it it was really, really done well. So I, I didn't know if it was a case where they just like had that one specific scene in English. Mm. Um, but no, like I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed the last two episodes, not, not the last two episodes, like episode nine, and the one before that. Yeah, I those thought, are two really strong mm, episodes. Yeah. They had like, like I said, I wasn't invested in the characters at that point, which is really weird because there were some scenes that like, I, I felt something, even though I had zero investment in the story yeah, yeah, and yeah. the characters, but just because of like the sheer brilliance of some some of the ways these, these scenes were directed, I was like, yeah. man, I'm, 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 I'm feeling something, even though I really shouldn't be right yeah. now. Um, did the mom have to die? Like I was thinking like, I was like, did she have to enter life here for this? Like, cause they kind of went like, I don't know if they probably went further, but it was like one minute on the boat. Oop, it's out of fuel. And it's I, like, I think it was implied though, that because her like device had run out of battery, that oh, she was officially was really? going to die. But didn't she have like a solar panel? No, no, because like that thing had become busted. Oh, she it said, had? Yeah. Oh shit. So okay, it, the implication okay. was that she was going to die oh, anyway. Oh shit, I didn't pick that up. Cause I, I thought, is she just killing herself for like the lols here? Like what's <laughs> She's just drowning for like- I mean, at, at this She's point- like, I have to fill in my one death per episode quota. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. at this point it was just, they were just killing characters they, off. That's what it felt like. It yeah. felt like they were like, every character was gonna die now and we were just gonna sit through it. Like it yeah. didn't feel like it was needed. Yeah. And the one character that should have died a million years ago, which is the crippled doctor survived. Yeah. <laughs> how? How? how, somehow, I don't know how. No, like, yeah, that's that was my biggest problem with it because it wasn't the fact that people were dying. It was the fact that you just knew they were Someone gonna, was die. gonna die. Like it was, it was just, okay, he, here's the scene where this person's gonna die. You know, there's no tension or anything. You're just, okay, well, they're gonna die and they're dead and everyone's moving on now. And it's sad mm. and you yeah. should be sad. And, <laughs> and Japan's sinking. Yeah, so like- But what? YouTube are good. YouTuber yeah, YouTuber good. good. YouTuber YouTuber good. good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really weird though, because I was having this conversation with Joey earlier yeah. though. I, th I think we can we, we can end the spoiler discussion now. No more spoilers. Uh, well, unless unless there's anything else you guys want to discuss about the series specifically. Uh, why like why of all pro games did he become a League of Legends pro? <laughs> and, and totally unrealistic. <laughs> I just, just, come on. 
And he's not a little shit. I mean, actually, he kind of was there, actually. Maybe, no, yeah. he was a little Yeah, maybe shit. he was a league player. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course, of course. <laughs> dad, right. dad dies. Why are you inting? <laughs> Why are you, sorry. Okay. No, but uh, yeah, it was, it was really weird because even though it was like, I would give like a four or five out of 10 at, at the end of the day, um, I still ended up having like good time watching it on Netflix. I don't know. Oh, I, don't yeah, know I, could, I don't know why. I couldn't right. look away. Like, yeah, it yeah. was great. Like I, I, I don't know why. Where where it's I I find it so easy to watch anime on Netflix as opposed to watching anime on like any other platform. Yeah. I've, I've been saying this since early 2018, ever since Devil May Cry Baby and other. Well, it was around the time when Netflix just started to get their hands yeah. on a lot of anime IPs that. With at least with stuff that comes out on Netflix, you know, Castlevania did it really well oh my as God, well. Castlevania Where, was so I think good. I think the reason why Netflix can kill it so hard with anime is because they know that most anime viewers, including probably all three of us, we'd like to watch shows just in one big chunk. Oh my god, Castlevania is so fucking Yeah, Castlevania, Castlevania is fucking is so amazing, fucking right? And it, I think what it is is that because whenever they release something new, they just go, we know you can't wait an entire week, so yeah. we're just yeah. gonna give you the whole thing all in one go. And it's perfect because Netflix is designed to Binge yeah, stuff, to be binged, right? Yeah. It also feels like there's no seasonal pressure as well. It's no, like if no. there's just one big show that drops, yeah, go and yeah. watch it right it's, now. It's, it's, not, it's not. It's not under any kind of like schedule. Or no, it's like nice. Because because nice. I've had plenty of shows where I want to binge them and I wait, like they're on Crunchyroll or Funimation or whatever platform, and I'm like, okay, I'm gonna wait for this is for this to be over, and then I'm gonna binge it, and then it's over. And then I don't binge it and I just don't watch it sometimes. Yeah, because by the time it ends, there's another whole new batch yeah. of yeah, shows I that know. you're interested in now. I so know. you never have time to go back to it. Yeah. And then I've watched so many like mediocre anime on Netflix. I have no idea why, but like- it, it, You like, can download it. It's like super this, easy. Yeah. Like, I, like, I remember watching, I think Be The Beginning as well. I was like severely disappointed in how that turned yeah. out. But I, I, watched it, I watched it all in one night. <laughs> and I still there are still many shows on every other platform <laughs> that I just still have not watched. And I'm just like, are on my plan to watch this. So yeah, I don't know what it is about watching shows on Netflix. That just makes it so- It's just painless. Like it's so easy to watch. Like yeah. they make mm. it way too easy for you to, Enjoy it the way you want to enjoy it. Yeah, right. they like, just they just know how the the viewing habits of yeah, you know, yeah, people yeah. of our demographic. Right? And the app works so well on your phone, so it's yeah. so yeah. easy to just chuck that shit on the Chromecast yeah, or download yeah, it to yeah, your phone. Yeah, yeah. Like you know, saves where you are. It's dude, it's so good. We're not sponsored by Netflix, but, <laughs> but if they want to hit, but us if they want to hit us up, <laughs> God, yeah. Okay, how would you feel about the uh, skip opening button though? I love the skip opening button. I I like mm. the option. I can, like I like I like having the option. Yeah, but like it's but I don't it's, like it's, how the default is that they default, skip it. Though. Yeah, it's default. I don't like how the default is skipping because wait, they don't they don't, they don't skip it straight away. Yeah, they do. Well, they the, don't. The, the first time you watch it, you you don't have the option. Well, you do have the option to skip it, but it mm. plays it for you automatically. Oh. But every time after that, then yeah, I think they just assume the that it, you're yeah. going to yeah. skip it, which yeah, sucked because when I was watching Beastars on Netflix, I was like, I don't want to skip this I mean, yeah, we, fucking I mean, opening. Yeah, Beastars you watch, but yeah. you, just, you, just, you don't have to do it. So you, I had to keep going. You don't going. have to touch it, Jerry. It's there in case you don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not like, touch me, touch me, Jerry, touch. <laughs> uh, speaking of Masaki Yuasa though, like how, how much Yuasa stuff have you guys watched? In the past, uh, um, I've watched which. most of his stuff except for probably Kaiba. Mm. Um, Devilman is that his? Yeah, that's yeah, Devilman is his. What else has he done? Oh, Azekun as well. I still, I yeah, it's it's, 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 fu we, it's we funny that, that I still haven't watched Azekun yet, yeah, even Aizuken. though I've I've watched Japan Sinks, which I feel like is going to be worse <laughs> than Azekun. And Azekun's been out for a while. He's done yeah. Azekun. He's done Ping Pong the Animation. Oh, I love Ping Pong the he's Animation. He's done Kaiba. He's done Mind Game. Mind Game. Um, Ping Pong's one of my favorites. Kick Hearts as well, which was the Kickstarter one. Right. Um, he's done a lot of uh, indie films as well. He did, yeah, Your Way. Oh, I haven't seen, I haven't one. seen. I still haven't wave. seen that. Yeah, yeah I, I really that. need to watch that. It's about the, it's like uh, girlfriend, boyfriend dies. They both love the ocean and then boyfriend reincarnates as a wave. Yeah. <laughs> that's the only way to describe it, right? That's the easiest way to describe it. It's like a hand time. Yeah. <laughs> Boyfriend re resurrects as a water beast. Yeah. Essentially. No, because I think my favorite Yuasa work will like is at the moment Ping Pong the Animation. Oh my God. That's, yeah, that's, Ping Pong's fantastic. That hit me on like 
a really fucking deep level. It oh, hit yeah. different. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I really want to stop saying that. Because, <laughs> like, <laughs> every time we're on, it's like, oh, this this show just hits different. It do be you know? hitting different. I, I guess because it's so, like, relatable in some way. Like, you've probably been good at something without trying, and you've also probably not been good I mean, at something. I mean, a lot, we had a lot of comments last week that was, yeah, Connor's chess story is basically ping pong the animation just with chess. Yeah, yeah. yeah you know yeah. what I mean? But the way it just portrayed, because to me, it's not a sports anime. You know, it's, no, no, no. to me, Ping Pong the animation is a life anime that happens to follow characters around one single yeah. one single sport. Right. Because it, it's it's such a good metaphor for life in general when it when it comes to the discussion of talent, you know, versus hard yeah. work and just basically how crushingly depressing life can be sometimes. Life isn't fair. Like, yeah, life, and, life is and, not fair. And no one's entitled to anything, unfortunately. Yeah. I mean, that's and the whole reason why I fucking loved Marsh Comes In Like a Lion, because that's essentially the exact same thing. I haven't thing. seen that yet. It's I not, really want to see it's, that. It is not a show about Shogi. Like, you'll get into Shogi yeah. after watching it, but it, much like Ping Pong the Animation, mm. it's just a story about how it doesn't matter how good you are at something, yeah. you're still going to be depressed as fuck. Yeah, actually, like yeah. that's the reason I've been happiness. putting it off. I'm like, I don't want to be depressed. It's, it gets pretty <laughs> I know upsetting. it does. Yeah. I know it does. Everyone who's watched it is like, yeah, but I loved fucking, it. I was just oh, ruined. It's so, <laughs> was totally- it's so good though. Do you, do you think Japan Sinks is his worst work that you've seen so far then? <sighs> Out of like the three I've seen? Yeah, it's probably. I mean, I haven't seen everything Masaki Yosa has to offer. Much. Yeah. I've seen a lot, but I, I'd probably say it's, yeah, it's probably his weakest. Yeah, I, I think definitely for me it was his weakest. And yeah. it's literally it's, just remove the cult. Yeah. And it's good. It, uh, so many problems would be solved if he just had yeah, removed I, I, the cult. I would say not, not every problem would be solved, but a, a lot, lot of a it. Lot. I, it would be like a lot better because I still had problems with how the characters were written yeah, yeah, and how the story yeah. played out. Mm. But removing removing the middle arc would have made it like an easy seven to eight out of 10. Yeah. Um, because there was still, like I said, there were still some amazing scenes. And if oh I yeah, was, there was some plenty of amazing scenes. And it was like peak Yuasa. And if I was actually invested, I, I would think that this show had some pretty amazing moments in it mm. um, because I, f- I feel like just it, it got bogged down by its story so mm. much. Yeah. Um, whereas his other works, I feel it was it was like a nice combination between this Yuasa style of directing because he has a I don't know some of his scenes the way the way he the way he portrays and directs especially like the emotional scenes. They just, mm. they they can hit really hard. And I don't know what he does. You're so close to Shut saying it. Shut the fuck You're up. so close to saying it. I said it in my head. I was it like, hits, I'll say it for you. It like, it hits thesaurus. Um, different. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, I, I agree. I, I definitely think that Yuasa, it, regardless of how yeah. strange it is that yeah. the way that he portrays, you know, mm. character designs and just movement in general. And just I mean, animation. Just right? animation I mean, I, in general. I, okay, I'm, I'm one of those anime viewers who does not care who the director is or any of that stuff. Mm. I, yeah. I just watch the show and that's how I watch an anime. I do that with everything. So, mm. I mean, I could tell it was from the same guy who did Devil Man within like 10 seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just tell. Yeah. Uh, that's how I do Because Yuasa's films and series have this really weird thing where uh, sometimes you look at a character design and they you think, oh fuck. wow, that looks pretty cool. And then the next scene, it looks like it's written by like the intern, you know? <laughs> it, it changes. I think there was like a few frames in it where it was like characters talking and it was like, bro, like paint. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like what? You can take a screenshot of that and just be a, a poet. <laughs> you know? I will say out of like all his works, I feel like Japan Sinks was his most like, normal looking work in terms of visual style and animation. Big air quotes for normal. No, no, no. You know, know, like you compare Ping Pong the animation and then you go to Devilman Crybaby and then Mm. Japan Sinks. I I would would say he's progressively gotten, in terms of his big series at least. More normal. More more like like normal. I mean, Ping Pong is one ugly looking show, but in a a great way. In a great way. Like he had a very unique art style and some of the scenes were like, they had a very unique animation style and some, I would still say sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work so well, mm. um, but it was definitely a very Yuasa style. I mean- but At least you ca- know it's hip. Yeah. yeah, right? I, yeah. How many fucking of those generic isekai shows are you like, I are these all animated by the same fucking people? They all look the same. <laughs> like, I can't tell. You ask any Saku Gatard and they'll probably know. It's like, <laughs> oh, this was directed by <laughs> <laughs> like, I, don't, I, don't, I don't care. Like, it's I like, just, I, I see an isekai protagonist now and it's literally a carbon copy of Kirito. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I, I remember doing like a copy and paste of 
seven different like isekai protagonists and they all looked exactly the same. It, it was all that yeah, generic probably same. because they're all A1. Yeah. Like. It's the exact same art style, the exact same animation all the time. And it's like, it's such a breath of fresh air to even get anything different. Now. Oh no. That's what Definitely. I love about Masaki Yuasa no. because he's just so weird yeah. that yeah. it's just instantly recognizable. Yeah. Especially, you know, Japan Sinks, as you were saying, even though it looks the most normal, probably to the general anime viewing audience, they yeah. would look at those characters and be like, oh, that looks fucking weird. Yeah. But then you go back to Masaki Yuasa's catalog. You watch something like Kaiba? Yeah. Like that thing, that doesn't even look like anime. Yeah, yeah. That thing looks like, a, you know, some kind of like Disney demo that it was locked away in the yeah, Disney yeah. vault for a while. But people you know? say that's about JoJo as well. They're like, yeah, the art style's weird. I can't get into it. I'm like, you'll know. <laughs> you'll appreciate it's it. It's an acquired taste. <laughs> yes. once, you, once you acquire that taste, there's no going back. But... Taste acquired. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I like JoJo now. <laughs> I was going to say, I completely forgot about the one show. I knew I was forgetting one show when we were talking about Masa Kiyosa, Um Tatami Galaxy. Oh. No Tatami Galaxy was fucking amazing. Like you watched it. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. fucking amazing. It's, it's, it's Monogatari, but on crack. It is Monogatari. Oh. Like this, this, this will test your reading ability <laughs> to the max. It, the monologue is so fast that Japanese people struggle to keep up with it. They're like, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, pause, 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 pause. What the fuck did he just like, go back? Yeah, it, it's, the, I've never heard of monologue and just talking scenes yeah. that go by so goddamn quickly. Yeah. It is it is Monogatari on crack, essentially. Yeah, it's, it's, it's basically like if you take Monogatari, but try to speed run the dialogue. And that's that's an episode of the Tatami Galaxy, but yeah. it's fucking great. Yeah, that, and that's on top of the fucking crazy Masaki Yuasa visuals, right? Yeah, but where it's just like, I don't know if this is like a dreamscape or if it's just weird. Yeah. Yeah, but it's great. It's fantastic. Uh, one thing I wanted to, uh, one thing that we kind of like lost over in terms of Japan sings that I want to talk about though, mm. is the music. I thought the music was fantastic. I thought it was phenomenal. And yeah. I, I, I think that definitely some of, it, it made some, it, it, it was what helped make some of the scenes yeah, to yeah. me. That main track, I think it played most of the first episode when the main character was running back to a family, that mm. kind of slow piano I think so. song. I love that track because it's really positive sounding and yeah. yet putting it next to the absolutely devastating visuals, yeah. it just becomes such a creepy song yeah. where it's like, oh, everything and everyone is dead. No, right. Cause like, I, I think the, <clears throat> well, like what sold me on the first two episodes was just seeing, seeing some of these like horrific scenes, horrific mm. landscapes and hearing this beautiful piano track mm. that just gave this like juxtaposition that just like, it was really unnerving, but beautiful at the same time. Like I, the way I described it to Sydney was it felt like I was watching some, s something that was horrifically beautiful. Yeah. And mm. I, that, that, that was- It was like a beautiful destruction. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I don't know who the composer was. It sounded very similar to Devilman Crybaby's soundtrack in some scenes as well. I, I don't know no if it's the idea. same composer. Ha did, I probably should have done my research before yeah. talking about Japan Sings on this podcast. I mean, I'm sure uh, it was done by Science Sara who did you know, yeah. uh, Devil May Cry Baby. So I assume it's the same guy, but I, I don't know. I'm sure someone in the comments can tell us about that. Yeah. But yeah, I love that piano track because I don't know. It, it, I, I'm not gonna lie. The first time I heard it, I it kind of reminded me of the Minecraft soundtrack a little bit. I was like, I, if this played during Minecraft, I would not be phased in any way. I, God I, fucking damn it! I, now, I, can someone in the subreddit take that piece of music and put it over Minecraft? Let's play it's, and it's, see if you can spot. It's this. it's like Gantz. This was such horrific beauty. This the juxtaposition was amazing. Minecraft. Joey, Minecraft. <laughs> It sounds like Minecraft though. That's what I, I, I was like, oh, Minecraft. I don't know if I'm just dumb, but I cannot remember any of the music. You really? You can't? No, I can't remember. <laughs> I watched it all in one sitting though. Yeah, we all did. Yeah. Did, did you all watch it in one sitting? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, I don't remember. Fuck we just have a bigger brain. I, clearly, I think I was preoccupied. With, uh, <laughs> the, how did he get a tank? <laughs> okay, a question to you then. What kind of OSTs do you remember? What sticks out for you then? Fuck. <laughs> uh, anything where like the music is like a huge selling point, I guess. You are. What, 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 what do you mean? <sighs> I mean, I don't want to be that guy, but I, like the one that sticks out immediately is like, you remember Cowboy Bebop, like the super oh, okay. jazzy, yeah. jazzy themes, okay. right? Like, mm -hmm. 
But I wouldn't listen to jazz on its own. I'm like, cause I'm like, this just sounds like a mess. I mean, <laughs> I've, I've come to understand that when it comes to music, you're a little bit brain dead. Yeah, yeah. Because I you just, don't, you don't really yeah. listen to. Because you know, Gun and I can have a conversation of, oh, this band is with awesome. the intellect. Oh, this artist is awesome. <laughs> and yet, I, 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 I remember I asked Connor once. I was like, well, who's your favorite band? And he was just like, I don't really have one. I'm like, I like no, what, I like Daft Punk. And you know why? Because it's just noise most of the time. <laughs> like I, I hate. Like I never listen to lyrics. Like I, I, I'll have like listened to like, I think I listened to like pumped up kicks like a thousand times or someone was like, it's about school shooting. And I actually listened to it. Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, I guess it is. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I'm just like, I don't know what's wrong with me. You are monkey brain. I, 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 it's, I, I, it's, I, it's a monkey brain coming dude, back, man. I have like half monkey brain, half giant brain, depending on like what it comes Do you know up, a single right? composer? Kevin Penkin. I, I, was about to, I, was, I was about to say, aside from Kevin Penkin, because he's our fucking mate. He's, he's like, he's, he's not composing in our minds. He's just do a you mate. Know, you know? Do you know what he composed other than Made in Abyss? Uh, yeah, he and did. And other uh, than Tower of God? Shield Hero. Yeah. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Shield Hero is pretty. The boy's not completely brain yeah, dead. Yeah. That's good. I guess because I focus more on voice acting than anything. And that's like taking up all the noise input I can take, right? Like, I don't. <laughs> I don't really give a shit about the music. To me, the music is just does, like- Does the music not enhance your viewing experience though? The music to me is so fucking important. Yeah. No, no, not really. Like, like if if a, if a, if there's a shitty series with a good soundtrack, I'm still gonna remember that soundtrack. I absolutely agree. To, to this day, like yeah, I, I, I will never forget Guilty Crown, despite how <laughs> shit Guilty Crown turns into. Jimbo. Sawano so, so, so fucking killed it with that sound. Yeah, that opening's I'm, a fucking bang. There's yeah, some yeah. songs that like will invoke an emotion in me from like if they've been a soundtrack, <laughs> but as far as it goes, it's like no. But have you never listened to a Sawano soundtrack and just gotten pumped no, up? No. Uh, not at all. Oh, like a maybe at the gym, like I'll put anime soundtrack to get hyped too, and maybe a you know a song. Okay, will, okay, a song okay. Will come on. But but know? but say for example, Premiere. Yeah, you yeah, fucking love that movie, right? Yeah. It was a great movie. Do you remember the soundtrack? No. How? What? How? How? <laughs> Not even how, how is it that the most in-your-face composer that has ever existed <laughs> in anime, Connor's like, if you were no, like, if you were like, no impression. If you were like, like. Describe a, a song to me from Promare. I'd be like, I have no fucking idea. No clue. No okay, you, clue. You watch Promare. You yeah. watch Attack on Titan. Yeah. You, what other? What yeah, other? Yeah, Attack on Titan. I remember the one that goes. I, I remember one from Attack on Titan. I don't know what it. Kill the kill. You remember Kill the yeah, kill. Yeah, Kill right? the kill. I remember. That's okay. That's that's all sound. Yeah, yeah. I remember like individual songs, but if you ask me to like describe them or what I like about them, I'd be like. They're all like crayon colors too. Like, I, don't, I don't know. Like for all I care, you could put like fucking Kevin McLeod music, whatever he's called. Kevin McLeod. Kevin McLeod, that's what he's called. Like you could put Kevin McLeod background. The creative Commons composer. <laughs> dun, 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 dun. You know this song. You can to, put those fucking songs. To be, and I would give to a be fuck. fair, some of the shows I've listened to have sounded well like some Kevin, Kevin McLeod music. Oh no, yeah. no. There, there's like, there's definitely been some generic sounding soundtracks that yeah. But they're normally like for generic shows, right? But yeah. I don't know, a soundtrack can easily sell me I, a series. I wish I could give a fuck. I don't know. I, just, like, <laughs> I It's with music as well. I love Daft Punk. I, I just like, wow, the the noise sounds nice. <laughs> like I like the noise. You know what I mean? Is that weird? Is that weird? Yes, am it I, is weird. Am I weird? It I'm is very weird. weird. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I, I think you just basically described music in 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 the most I like think I, I think bare bones monkey brain. It is terms. a bunch of noises <laughs> I, I, put I, I together. Think, I think I actually am like a caveman when it comes to music. I'm like, oh, the beeps and the boops are very pleasing. You know, like music goes boop. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Music goes boop. I mean, that's a huge reason uh, with when it comes to soundtracks. That's a huge reason why I love anything made by uh, Key Studios, right? Oh. Because yeah. Maida Jun is a fucking amazing composer. Oh. And his like just subtle piano tracks or any yeah. of the openings and endings just it yeah. builds on the scene so fucking nicely and yeah. adds like a whole like <laughs> yeah, totally like like <laughs> at least to me I don't know maybe I'm the only one but I could just listen to say any track from Clanad or Air yeah. or Little Busters yeah. and it could be a specific song that can evoke a specific scene and I could easily oh, shed no, a like, tear just from listening to it. Like his work is basically, if you want to hit the emotional G spot. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you, you hear it and you're like, oh, oh shit, no. How, it feels like how does a single piano put this much emotion behind it? <laughs> no. I have no fucking idea. I feel like the Mike Wazowski meme where he's just standing there right now. Just, <laughs> just listening to this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> you guys, you guys don't, I don't know. I, 
You are the first person to ever describe Daft Punk as noise. <laughs> it's like I'm just saying. Pleasant noise is the way I like it. Pleasant, you mean well, music? <laughs> Interstellar three, whatever it's called. What is it? Interstellar three? Five, 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 that's, five. that's great. Yeah. I love that. That's great. I love that. <laughs> has, has, has the track never evoked emotions from you though? Mm. Like Have actual, you never listened to- Actual evo emotions? Okay, what's your favorite Daft Punk track? Oh, that's hard. I, th I really like Face to Face. Okay, why is it your favorite track? Oh my God. Is like, it because it evokes an emotion? <laughs> or? No, you can see no. in his face, he's never thought about this, this never, deeply before. I've never, no, Why I've is never. this my favorite song? No, I, I, I like all the sampling in it. I think it's like crazy how creative they are with sampling. Right, it's so you're like looking at them. So is there, okay, think about the one Daft Punk song. It doesn't have to be Daft Punk. Yeah. Just think about the one song that has evoked yeah. like any kind of emotion in you. What song would that be? And what emotion would that be? Yeah, I, I, I don't think there is. <laughs> I don't think there is a song that evokes emotions in me. Is that bad? Is that, what does that mean? What does that mean about me as a person? I'm, 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 ta I'm talking to a fucking brick wall yeah. here. I'm <laughs> like, oh, it's, 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 it hurts it's like, so it's like much. Trying to, it's like trying to explain to, you know, Pepper the Android what music is. It's just like, it does not compute. Yeah, it's like, I feel like I'm alien right now. What is emotion? <laughs> what is culture? What is, <laughs> what is this? Like, I don't know. I guess like for me, I maybe that's why like I, Focus. I, I'm. I feel like I'm really uh, strong in being able to uh, really break down voice acting in shows and really like get into it. But I think that's because I'm completely fucking ignoring. But, but what, what the like music. brings emotions to you? The I guess. story and the characters so and the performances. Okay, yeah. but does not. But but does voice acting not? Give you emotion? Yeah, the voice acting does. Okay, so how come music can't do that? Do you, I don't know. I guess I can't like. I don't know. It doesn't connect with me. I don't know. <laughs> do, do, do you know a medium where you can feel emotion just by story and characters? Books. Books. Yeah. I don't read. <laughs> Which we've established. Yeah. But I'm like, I, I don't, you don't wanna, read books. I don't, don't want to read the book. I want someone to read it for me. The music for me is something that like ties it together, and it's something that if it's done well, I don't notice. And if it's done badly, I will notice. Okay, no, which I agree with that. that. Which is the way well, I think that most people view like voice acting. No, no, I agree with how if music is done well, I don't if, if it's done so well, then sometimes you can't notice it. Yeah. But but then there's I a disagree. level- No, cause like, I don't I don't look out for it. Like I, I don't seek No, no, music. when I say when I say good, I mean like just It blends in perfectly, yeah. Like yeah. satisfactory music, you don't notice it. Yeah. But you will definitely hear when a soundtrack oh, is really when, fucking When there's yeah. a track that they use in amazing ways, I'll notice that track and I'll like have like a little log right. of it. But, but does yeah. that not like, give like you emotion? You, you, you've definitely heard the Sarwino drop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah, I get a little hype. That's about yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> a little hype. I'm like, <laughs> Woo, we're excited for this man. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> <laughs> Go protagonist. <laughs> I like. Oh my, god. oh my god. Have you ever watched like, okay, my, my favorite soundtrack of all time right. is probably Zankyo no Teda or Terry in oh, Resonance. I remember enjoying that show a lot. Okay. So good. Does, I remember the music was sad. I don't know about it's much. The ice, oh it's my, the, it's this haunts me so much. <laughs> Did you, the music was sad? Yes. The okay. music was That's, sad. It's like saying peppers are what, hot. The way you know? I see it, right? When you, when you talk about music to me, you need to filter it through like the YouTube audio library tags, like genre <laughs> and mood. That's the only thing I understand about music. Tell me the genre of music and the mood it was. Okay, you watched Zanky on the right? Yeah, I loved it. it was great okay, show. It, it had the whole Icelandic, uh, like kind of post-rock drone ride. The, the, mo the motorbike scene where yeah. they're on like the motorbike and it's nothing oh. but just no di no dialogue, mm. That's such a good just scene. them riding on a motorbike with beautiful visuals and beautiful music. Yeah. Do you remember that scene? No. <laughs> I remember them being terrorists. <laughs> this is, I'm, I'm getting so fucking frustrated now. Oh my God. I just remember them being like terrorists, right? And it was fun anime. You remember them being terrorists? <laughs> I remember them blowing up shit. That's like saying Attack on Titan. I remember them being Titans. Uh, yeah, I remember there's Titan. Dude, I, I remember enjoying that show, but like when I finished, like it's gone. Okay, okay, okay. Then let's let's steer away. Let, let's go down. <laughs> let's go down to the most like rudimentary level here. Let's okay, let's okay, go to okay. 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 What is your favorite anime opening? Oh, that's good. I really like the Kogias one. Okay, the Kogias one. one. Why? It's hype as fuck. Okay, but what makes it like like what emotions do you feel when listening to it? Is it excitement? Yeah, Is excitement. it like I get excited? Yeah. Okay, so how come you can put emotion into that song? But what, what makes but, what makes that memorable? Yeah, what makes that memorable? Yeah, the the, the opening part is pretty hype. You know, the the, the Jimbo. <laughs> That's just a meme. <laughs> yeah, I love it though. It's good. What else do I love? I mean, so, the JoJo the JoJo opening is hype as fuck. Which one? Sorochino. 
Okay, okay. Why, oh, no, no. Do you want to do his theme? Okay, do you want theme? Okay. Why does that, why, why do you, that, why do you why, like why, why, why did that stand out? As I said, in, I think I tweeted it. I was like, it's the Bohemian Rhapsody of anime theme. What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? What does that mean? Because there's so much shit going on. It's like a five minute song and there's just like so many fucking <laughs> things happening. And I'm like, wow, this is amazing. I don't know if it's the coffee or this conversation, but I'm actually it's, getting a headache. <laughs> I'm, getting like a, I'm getting like a brain aneurysm right now. I, I imagine the viewers at home are like, what is wrong with this kid? What's, yeah. what's, what's, I'm like dying inside just listening to this. Oh, how have I never had this conversation with you before? Man? I guess because every time you bring up music, I think I just go yeah. like, yeah, okay. <laughs> You, if we went to school together, you would be that one kid who would wear a Kurt Cobain t-shirt not knowing who Nirvana was. <laughs> I mean, like to be like, yeah, I like his face. Yeah, I like his, I like yeah. the, that Teen Looks, Spirit yeah, song. Teen there. Spirit, <laughs> yeah. What is it? Looks like Teen Spirit, what was yeah, it called? Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, what else do you value anything else in an anime <laughs> aside, aside from yeah. like story and characters then? um, I mean, the visuals are really important, right? Like I, I feel that it's like, it's, <laughs> It's not so much that I don't appreciate music. It's again, like I said, like mm. if it's done well, it yeah. blends in and I don't really pay much attention to it. Okay, like, but you remember the Cowboy Bebop soundtrack. Yeah. Okay, why do you remember that? I remember it, it went like really well with all the choreo. Like the well, all the movements in that show like blended mm. so well yeah, with the music. Yeah. And I remember it like made them both stand out more than anything at the time when I was watching right. it. Because the choreo so, goes so So your well. argument is that because the, the it's, feeling it's, of the it's, soundtrack it's, it's, it's not is an argument. so completely <laughs> it's not an argument. different. No, I'm just saying, like, I'm not trying to argue or anything. I'm just saying that's what I remember is because- No, 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 because because you kind of, because your logic from what I'm understanding, okay, your okay, logic okay. is that- Again, I don't think you, about this too much. Yeah, well, your logic is that the Cowboy Bebop soundtrack you remember, I remember because it. the feeling and vibe you got from the music was so different to the visuals, right? I, I, no, no, because I can't put the visuals without the music there. Okay. In my head. okay. So like, how I, come you don't remember Zankyo no Terra then? Because it does the exact same thing. I remember yeah. like maybe like two scenes from Zankyo no Terra. <laughs> Literally. And, and do they involve any music? No. <laughs> I remember seeing a building explode. <laughs> I was about to oh say, I was about to say and, the only and, sound and, I remember and, is just an explosion. And I remember someone getting sniped. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember being sad by the sniped. I was expecting to say that you were very impressed with the no scope. I was yeah. very impressed <laughs> with this man's aim in a helicopter. Very impressed, you know, must have had some very military background. Oh I, okay, like when I watch a show that was good, but not like life changing, mm. it kind of just goes in the back of my head. And I remember like- But apparently if you watch life changing shows, you don't remember the music anyway. So <laughs> it's like- I remember Bocarano theme. I remember the Bocarano yeah, theme. Everyone yeah. knows that song though. That's all I remember from Bocarano, the music so, though. So you don't remember the soundtrack? No, not at all. I remember the soundtrack being pretty good to Bocarano. No clue. Um, actually, I don't remember that. Yes. I, I just remember the opening. This I, man doesn't remember one single soundtrack. <laughs> because, How because, dare because, he? because after after last episode, or sorry, a couple of episodes back, uh, I went and rewatched a couple yeah. of episodes of Bokorana just because I hadn't seen yeah. it in such a long time. And the sound, I remember the soundtrack. I was like, wow, this soundtrack Pretty is sure. really fucking good. It's like, for some reason, I cannot for the life of me, remember character names after the end of the show. <laughs> like. I'm just like, it's the blue haired one and he does something. It's, not, do. even, it's not even monkey brain, it's just goldfish yeah, brain. I, just, I, I genuinely, like, it's so weird because I'll remember so many things vividly in my life, but when it comes to entertainment and stuff that I consume, it's yeah. like, like, it just goes. I mean, I guess that's good because you probably just infinite rewatchability, right? Yeah. Yeah, I can rewatch shows and not get enjoyment out of them. Oh, again, I forget, of that. Cause I forget half the shit that I've seen. Right. Like, uh, what did I re I rewatched something recently and I remember being like very impressed. Cause I'm like, I forgot all, I rewatched Breaking Bad and I was like, I forgot all of this shit. Yeah. <laughs> through seasons one through five, I don't yeah. remember anything. I mean, that's a long show, so that makes it's, sense. Yeah, 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 yeah but yeah. yeah, that's- <laughs> I don't know, is that weird? I'm sure there's people in the comments who are the same, who are like, don't remember any no, characters. I've, I've, don't remember the soundtracks. I've I've met I've met someone. I, Why I, are you watching Adam? Yeah, <laughs> I love what I love the experience. Like, leave me alone. I get what I get you, out of you it. You enjoy man. the experience that you don't yeah. remember after it. Do you, do you remember I've everything just, that you consumed? Never, this I've legitimately never had this conversation before. Yeah. Like this this conversation is a first to me. I've, really? I've never I've never had to explain nah, nah, to nah, someone. Why music is like a good thing? I know, no, no, in terms no, no. of entertainment, I, I'm not. I'm not arguing that it's not a good thing. I just don't remember it. And the, okay, I am convinced, right, that people 
lie about like when you have discussions with them and you're like, yeah, you remember the soundtrack? I'm just convinced that they're just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was totally great. I love it. I mean, that. like the sound, there's like- Definitely people who do that all the time. No, yeah. but like to say there's like not a single soundtrack from like some of your favorite series that you remember. I can't remember anything. But if you hear it, you'll-, you'll If I hear it, I reckon I'll, okay. I'll be able to pull out that memory from the, the <laughs> dusty old cabinet. Though. Right, but then you'll pull it out and what you'll pull out a file that just says good. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, nice. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, okay, it's like, I can remember voice performances quite well, mm. but that's because I, I take an active interest in really learning those and really studying that. So but what, for no, me, no, no. For me, so what to you tell, makes a good voice performance then? And Ooh. is it something that has to be in English Ooh. or does it? Ha can you recognize it in like Japanese as yeah, well? Yeah, Japanese too. But I think that's just from watching a lot of Japanese media. Mm. Like yeah. It's something that you can, because the way you deliver a line, anything, right? The way I vision, a line, there's a, uh, when you deliver a singular line, there's like a visualization to it. Of, mm. If you imagine the pacing and the pitch, like there should, there, in my head, with a good line, there is a set way it should be delivered, right? Mm. And it's okay. the way the director wants it to. And yeah. the, I imagine like someone like Quentin Tarantino has the same idea, where right? it's like the line is delivered the way I see it, yeah, yeah. right? And so it's like, I just visualize in my head the way it should go. Like if you should raise your voice, how mm. you should raise your pitch, and then what, when you should take it down, when you should slow it down, when you should add a pause. And it's really interesting seeing how like some of the actors will deliver a certain line and where they'll choose to take pauses or how they'll choose to slow words down. Mm. I think that's really interesting. No, that's really I, great I'm, I'm the it. same, like, you know, I haven't done as much voice acting yeah, as yeah. you, but yeah. I, I definitely take a keen eye to voice acting as well because I also want to get better at it. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I totally get what you mean with the cult curve thing. There's the way yeah. I wish that like, I wish I had figured out a way where I could definitively show people what I mean in my head right. yeah, about yeah. that because if you put the line on like an axis of Y and the, like X, you know, mm. there would it would go like that, right? Yeah. And it would be like, right. you need to pause here. You need to take a break here, slow down this word. This word's in italics. So please put emphasis on it, but not too much emphasis because yeah. that would be bold. Yeah. You know? yeah. It's like really loads of nuances that we don't see as the audience that I'm trying to in my head when I'm listening to something, I'm imagining how they saw the script. Yeah. And I'm trying to think <clears throat> back to what they were thinking. So like, depending on what medium we're in now, like, and also, ever since I got way too into voice acting, I see so much ADR and it puts me the fuck off in films. When you can hear one line that's delivered in the room yep. and mm, one line where they yeah. did it in post. Yeah. And it's so grating when you hear, because <laughs> like so many sitcoms do this where they like have the line done in post. Yeah. You yeah. don't realize how many movies are done in post as well. Know, like, they're done so well that, mm, you know. Yeah, yeah, I, I've, I've definitely noticed it recently when I've it's like- so grating. Yeah, mm. like when you notice it once, you can't stop noticing it, mm. I've, I noticed. And and that's the problem I have with um, watching shows that are dubbed in languages like, uh, you know, Italian or whatever, or, or Dutch. Normally they're, they have to dub so many shows where they're just <laughs> pumping this out. Mm. And yeah. there's not really much given to the sound of it. And it sounds like everyone's in a studio every yeah. single TV show they're in, no matter where they go, when I hear this Italian or this Dutch guy speak, it yeah. always sounds like they're in a studio. When mm -hmm. they're outside, it's like, mm -hmm. what the fuck? I hate that so much. <laughs> and, and that's the reason why when people are like, oh, I watched, I had a German friend who watched Game of Thrones <laughs> in Dutch, or a German, sorry, dubbed. Mm -hmm. And I was like, why? It sounds like everyone's in a studio. They're on no. a battlefield. No, it's, you know it's, I mean? exactly, it's exactly the same as uh, Thai dubs when I was talking about shitty right, Thai right. dubs and they just don't know audio mixing. Mm. So instead of like making it sound like they're in the environment they're in, it's always in the same studio. And instead of like mixing in the voices, they just like quiet every other voice <laughs> and every other sound, every other sound. So oh the voices God. are just like 10 times louder than every sound effect yeah. every time someone talks and then the sound effects get louder again. Oh my God. It's like the worst kind of audio mixing. That's you could lazy think of. as fuck. Yeah, yeah. I, know. I mean, now I'm not sure if they did it back then, but now commonly the Japanese uh, studios will just give uh, basically a track with mm -hmm. just the voices taken out. Yeah, mm. and they're like, "Here's everything. We've done it all for you. Just add the voices." Yeah, yeah. normally quite easy. Um, but yeah, but the, in terms of dubbing or, or voice performances in anime cartoons, that's a whole different. Like, yeah, I, I feel like I feel like one unsung hero in terms of like voice acting and dubbing is the voice director, mm. because oh, I yeah. I feel like obviously you know actors get a, a lot of the credits, but I feel they also get all the shit. They also get all the <laughs> shit as well, and I feel like the, a voice director has so much control 
over how good this voice performance is going to be. Because mm. I've, I've definitely vo worked with voice actors and actresses in my own Abridged series yeah. that, where they've, they've done a great fucking job. And then I, I see them voice in like other projects mm. and it's terrible. It, it's, it's bad. Yeah. Yeah. It hurts me because I know the potential that these voice actors have. Um, and I know that it's probably just bad voice yeah. direction, you know, yeah. and, yeah, come, come. and a, lo a lot of people don't think about it, that or don't know that because they just think, oh, that it's a shitty voice actor. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. yeah, it's a real shame. Uh, it's difficult because unless you've been in an environment where you've worked with a director mm -hmm. or had someone directing you in any way, it's really hard to understand the role of a director. Yeah. I didn't quite get it until I had worked in that space. And it's kind of the person who like, because when you're doing it for yourself and you're acting, you're in your own head. You're yeah. your worst enemy. Cause you're yeah. like, fuck that, I should have done it this way. Cause when I record for one of my own videos, 20 takes. I record for someone else <clears throat> with a director, one or two takes. Yeah. yeah. Because they tell me what they want and they help me get there. Mm. And a lot of people, like there's 10% of voice actors who can deliver lines amazingly without a director. Yeah. But then there's like 50% who need a director. Yeah. And there's like <laughs> 30, 40% who, let's be honest, they're never gonna get <laughs> anywhere with it. Like there's no <laughs> saving them. It's sad to say that, but it's one of those things where you do need like a good ear somewhat. It's for a skill, it. absolutely. It's, 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 it's definitely a skill. Cause mm. I, I personally think I'm a much better voice director than I am a voice actor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, even though I've done both. I try to like insert my own voice as little as possible whenever I'm doing kind of any kind of voice work that I've done before. Yeah. Mm. But I really enjoy directing because it's, it's, it's definitely a, a unique skill. Cause I've seen how other people direct their, their work as well. And it's, everyone has a different style. Yeah. Some are just not effective at, at all. Some 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 voice directors, you know, they, they have no idea what they want. No. Nah. You know, and, yeah, and it's, it's just on the voice actor to save to save the performance somehow, even mm. though the director has no idea what they want. Um, do you ever get that moment though, when you're directing someone and you they've not delivered the line exactly the way you want it. And so you, you have to explain it to them and you get yeah. to the third point. Yeah. The third, yeah. it's, the, it's the third time, the third time you've tried and they still haven't done it the way you want it to. Do you, do you continue? Like, do, do, do you continue trying to explain it to them or do you just go with one of the takes? Normally I will do, I would try my best to explain it to them. Yeah. Um, Worst case scenario, I'll do a line read, which a line read is, uh, you don't normally do it. It's kind of, it's not unprofessional, but it wastes a lot of time, which is where the director will deliver the line. And I'll be like, just copy what I just did. Yeah, And that's what I'll do on the worst case scenario. And if they can't do that, then it's like, fuck. <laughs> <sighs> Like, this is going to be bad. Yeah, like yeah. If, if they if they can't hear one like what I just did, yeah. and then they can't replicate it. Mm. That means that they have no idea what I just did. Yeah, yeah. in my head, I'm like, okay, they don't even see what I did. They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, uh... It's it's the worst feeling in the world, isn't it? <laughs> that... It's pretty awful. Today's video is sponsored by Zenonzard. Zenonzard is a unique AI based anime card game for the mobile that's just been recently released. So, do you guys know what the AI card game entails? I have no idea what AI. Card so game. basically, the AI card game. So in the game, you get an AI buddy that you can choose from. And and the choice of the AI buddy, I think there's 16 different AI characters that you can choose from. And it's based off of this interview that you do at the beginning of the game that dictates your personality. And right. you pick the AI that best suits your personality. But basically you have an AI buddy that plays along and helps you strategize to play Zenonzai, which is this card game. And the AI buddy like gives you legitimate advice on the game to like how you can beat the game and like different strategies. And you don't have to follow the AI, but you know, a lot of the AIs are, are, are cute girls, and, and sometimes cool. they're just like really cool characters. And you're like, okay, you know what? You're, you're an AI. I'll listen. I'll, I'll listen cool. to you. Yeah, I'll yeah. listen to you. Yeah. So as I understand it, there's also 500 different cards with seven different categories, and I've also seen a few clips of the game, and the visuals look pretty damn impressive for a mobile game. So the actual gameplay involves three phases. You have the mana movement phase, the flash phase, and the main phase. And the unique feature about Zenonzard is the mana movement system, where you can move summoned minions to and from mana in kind of a a really interesting recycling mechanism. So as you play against an AI opponent, you can easily take breaks whenever you want, but you can also play against PVP as well. So if you download the game right now, then you can actually get your hands on 240 of the 500 cards available in the game, just off of ongoing events. And if you use the hashtag Zenonzard ACI on Facebook and Twitter, you can use that to connect with other players in the game or to just battle and flex your hot AI waifu. So if that sounds interesting to you, go down to the description down below and download Zenonzard today and you could get up to 240 of the exclusive 500 cards. Thank you to Zenozar for sponsoring today's episode and back to the video. I did a video series where I like fixed 
uh, games, hentai, anime. I redid all the, the voice acting from the ground up. Um, and the only rule was that I wasn't allowed to change. Uh, I, was, I wasn't allowed to change anything but mm -hmm. the voice acting. Mm -hmm. and the whole point of that was to like prove to the viewers that like, listen, you could you can fix the, the bad voice acting, but more often than not, it's not the bad voice acting that is terrible about this series or mm -hmm. thing that you watch. Like it's normally just cause like everything else is terrible. Yeah. And the one thing that stands out is this dude who's delivering a line shit. Like, yeah. yeah. But that's normally as a, a result of everything else being shit. Cause voice actors are the last priority for most things because yeah. they're normally the thing that you do at the end. And some games and stuff like games are normally the worst, uh, worst culprit of terrible voice acting. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, no. Especially <clears throat> Japanese games that get translated into English normally have God fucking awful voice acting. Yeah, oh, definitely. a lot of those games as well just have absolutely horrible localization. Oh, just Jesus, just the yeah. dialogue. Uh, clearly the person who was translating it does not have the firmest grasp of both yeah. languages. And, and it's because normally they're not given like a, an amazing budget to do it. No, no. They, these they games get, are long. They get pretty <laughs> underpaid, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. So they're just like, whatever. I'll just do the yeah, bare minimum. It's, it's yeah. Run it through Google Translate yeah. if need be. You know, <laughs> yeah. fuck it. No one's gonna notice. The voice actors <laughs> are shit anyway. Who cares? Leave the Japanese word in with like okasan. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okasan means mum in Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> All according to Keikaku. Oh like spe speaking about voice actors and voice acting. Like yeah. the only person who's actually been in an anime here. Is you, Joe? Yeah, yeah. On like an actual Japanese anime. Like, yeah. what, what was the experience like for you then? That was really cool because. Do you want to explain? Like, you're on Pop Team Epic. Yeah. And what so, you had to do? Yeah. So I, I just purely by coincidence, I got to voice in Pop Team Epic. Uh, even though all my lines I did were in English, it was technically, <laughs> yeah, it was technically the you're Japanese. In the He's in the sub. I'm in the sub. <laughs> I know because. Funimation dubbed Pop Team Epic <laughs> and they didn't use me. Wow. I don't think they're allowed to though. Legally. No, they yeah, weren't. Yeah. But you know, Funimation, you could hit me up. My, my DMs were open. My man. DMs were open. We follow each other on Twitter. <laughs> you could have DM me anyway. So I voiced uh, this. It, it was this entire episode that was voiced in English because Pop Team Epic's just crazy. No, yeah. no rules, right? Yeah. Um, and it was really cool because. Uh, I got to voice act with the guy who voiced Ryo in Devil May Cry Baby. Oh, wow. oh awesome. Because he's also fluent in English. He's pretty good at English. Oh, wow. Yeah, so, and he delivered obviously in the English part as well. And it was really cool because, uh, it, you know, it, it's a, a lot of the portrayals is of voice acting is that, you know, one person goes into the booth, they do their lines, next person comes in. That's and normally how over. it is. That's yeah, normally yeah. how it is. But I don't know if this is only in the Japanese industry, but at least with the anime, they put, all the voice actors that are in the one episode all into the same room. And there are four or five mm. microphones lined up. Yeah, mm. I, I saw I saw that with some like behind the scenes documentaries. Yeah. Cause I think how I understand the dubbing in like the English speaking world is that you get one booth, yeah. one, one voice it's one actor. It's one after the other. Yeah, one after right? the other. But in anime, it's you. they do it all in one go. So yeah. if there's a current mm. scene where there are four voice actors, then all four voice actors will go up to the mics and yeah. basically while holding a, the, the script in their hand, take it in turns to deliver their line. Yeah. And when they're not doing their line, they pull away from the mic. I yeah. think all cartoons used to be that way in the West. Yeah. But I think recently it's changed. I think so. I, th I think one series you definitely see that effect in is Konosuba, mm. oh, where yeah, you, you so can good. you can tell that all of the characters are just like bouncing off each other. Oh and yeah, that's, it that's helps what, so much. Yeah, and like the dub, the dub for Konosuba is actually great. And yeah. I, I commend them for being able to like recreate this energy while not being in the same room because because you can definitely feel that energy in the Japanese dub um, in Konosuba. Oh, that's, yeah. that's what makes yeah. one of its that. That's why know. it's so good because you can tell that these aren't just characters that are fucking around with one another, but yeah. voice actors that are just having a great time yeah. together. Yeah, exactly. And you need that dynamic in a show like that. Yeah. And But it was really cool because with Pop Team Epic, uh, you know, we would all come onto one scene, you know, there was me, you know, the main voice actor. And then there was like three or four voice actors who were doing, the, you know, just side characters. Yeah. And it was really cool because once a scene would finish, then if one of us needed a retake or it was really cool because all of the voice actors would come together and basically critique what we all just did in that one scene. Oh, that's cool. Oh, okay. So that we would all come together and I would get, you know, professional advice from the, the voice actor who did mm. Rio being like, okay, that line delivery was really cool, but maybe if you deliver this next line like this, then I could respond in this kind of way. Oh, okay. And while all of this conversation is happening, the voice director is also listening in. So he can yeah, put yeah, in yeah. an input of his right, own if right. need be. Um, so, I mean, I didn't have to do too many retakes with Pop Team Epic because 
the voice actor was just like, yeah, that's good. <laughs> he just did not give a shit, all right? He was just like, yeah, good enough, fucking whatever. I mean, like you, you were speaking in English. So he was like, yeah, this this probably sounds better than right. most, most of the, the English the voice only, actors. Who the only time that the voice actor asked me to do, or the voice director asked me to do something super specific was when I had to do the narrator voice uh, for the Guilty Gear parody scene where I had to say heaven or hell, like yeah. in ah. Guilty Gear. Uh. And he was like, no, no, because the voice director was like a massive fan of Guilty yeah. Gear. So he's like, no, 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 that's not how you say it. <laughs> you have to say it like this and you just boom it over the PR system. <laughs> while all, all of us just sitting there like, okay, <laughs> I'll do it like that, yeah. I guess. That sounds yeah. like such a fun experience. Oh, yeah. it was yeah. super fun. God, yeah. were, you, were you nervous doing it? Oh, hell yeah. Because, <laughs> because literally everybody else around me are bro. professional yeah. Japanese yeah, yeah, voice yeah. actors. And, but it was really cool because all of the voice actors were like, wow, how long have you been doing voice acting? I was like, I this is my, this is my first gig. <laughs> <laughs> Technically speaking, this is my first gig. Yeah, and yeah, they were like, yeah. you're really fucking good. I was like, well, call your boy back. And then everyone <laughs> cheered. <Yeah. laughs> everyone lifted Joey up. <laughs> like, hey. I was like, subscribe. <laughs> Damn, dude. Oh, dude, I've had some terrible fucking clients when I really? did a lot of commercials because they would bring in like a business executive mm, right. to come in and critique and they don't fucking know anything. Right. And they would, I remember one time there was a guy and I did this whole take and I thought I killed it. And he was like, yeah, something's like off with it. This wasn't the director. This was yeah. just the guy who was paying for it to be made. Mm. And, I, and he was like, yeah, could you just try something different? I did the exact same thing again, no different. And he was like, that was perfect. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I fucking knew it. Cause like, I know, okay, I, I, in my head, I'm like, I know I can get away with doing the same thing one more time, right. but like maybe not a second time. So I was like, I'll just try once, see if he notices. He yeah. had no fucking yeah. idea. Yeah, yeah, at that point onwards, anytime he said anything, I would just look at the voice director over there. I'm like, <laughs> I would look at him. I'm like, should I listen to this? Like. <laughs> he was the engineer and the director of the thing. Right. Yeah. He, so he normally does the deliver. Uh, the way I, the way I, it was set up for me was he normally directed me, and the client would just stand there and go like, mm, mm, yes, mm. <laughs> mm, mm, yes. Like cause I was always doing business stuff. Right. Yeah. It was like it was like perseverance, <laughs> inspiration, shit like that. Yeah, you did like a Gillette commercial, right? Or it wasn't oh, Gillette? Sh- it was like it. a like a shaving oh, cream commercial, whatever it was. Something that was ages ago. I was doing like boats for like a year. You did boats? boats? I did like a, there was some, oh, I can't, I don't know what the corporation is. And I also don't know if I should say, I don't know if I'm allowed. I don't know what I signed. I, I <laughs> Once a week, I would go in for three hours and I would talk about boats. Wait, how old were you? This was like last year. Oh really? Every week I went in and talked this about- This is in London, right? Yeah, this was in London. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got paid like, Fuck, like how much was it? They were paying me 250 pounds an hour. Oh, wow. Uh, which is like 300 something bucks. Yeah. And Just I, talk about which, boats. And which is probably like a lot better than what voice actors get paid to voice an anime. Yeah, right? definitely. Like, uh, yeah, anime rates aren't that great. I mean, I don't, I don't know if, you know, I'm gonna, I'll just say like- I mean, I've I heard, definitely didn't get paid that. Yeah, yeah. I, I've heard things and yeah. uh, I, you know, you get paid it, on Funimation from what I've been told. I don't know if this is true. I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but it's not, it's not great. It's not, it's not I, 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 I less mean, than I, what I was getting. Yeah. Paid. I mean, yeah. I, it's like, I, I think it's always just been known that the voice acting industry in anime specifically, just like- You get paid the least. Out yeah, of you any, get paid the least out definitely. of any commercial, which is why you see a lot of dub voice actors going on to do gaming now yeah. in other yeah. industries. The, the, the way it goes is like, it's like uh, normally commercials pay the most because commercials you get paid normally a premium, and then you also get what's called a buyout fee. Mm-hmm. So if your ad is gonna be played over X amount of places with radios, TV, that gets calculated in the cost. Yeah. And you could get like one commercial that takes you 20 minutes, which it often did. Because yeah. commercials are 30 seconds long, mm-hmm. mostly. Yeah. And I would never be there for more than 30 minutes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they would maybe pay you like 15 grand for the Jeez. buyout fee. So your session fee was like 250 pounds, yeah. but then you might get 15 grand or 10 right, grand, depending, right. on, depending on where they play it and how much. Cause I know the, Guy who did McDonald's ads in the UK. That was his whole career. Yeah. Just doing McDonald's. Really? Yeah. Because you got he got paid so fucking. Oh yeah, much. it is McDonald's. They just getting like six figures every commercial. Jeez. Because you know that's luckily how the industry was is that you got paid if your voice was being. Could shown. you imagine getting paid six figures by going? Ba da ba ba ba. I wish, man. <laughs> but that's the thing. He like, was like, like it. imagine <laughs> how much how much money McDonald's made off of off of no, that. Right, right. Because the, right. the normally how it is with commercials is that. If you're normally with voices, if a corporation gets one voice actor, it's normally always that one voice actor who does mm, everything. Yeah. So in the industry where I, when I was in London, it was mainly commercial stuff. So it came up a lot and it was always like people were competing to get that one commercial gig that kept coming. Yeah. And so I got this boat gig and I didn't think anything of it. 
Um, cause I didn't audition. They like requested me. So I went in, I did mm. a read for it. And I was talking about, um, I had to explain a ton of different things about large ships <laughs> for a corporation <laughs> thing. Okay. And I had to go in every week and do something ballasting. That was what I did like fucking four weeks of thing called ballasting, right? Oh, yeah. Ballasting is a thing. And I know this cause I did four scripts okay, on s- it. Sell us a bit. Yeah, what yeah, what, yeah, what yeah. is ballasting, sir? It was like, it was like, it was like, God, I wish I remembered the words. And I remember every time I would go in to deliver it, cause my accent is, is English. English, right? But it's not uh, received pronunciation, which is the stip- typical accent, which is, mm. I say grass, but it's grass. Mm. So every time I would do anything, it's like, you didn't you didn't say the, the received pronunciation? Plant. Do it again. I'm like, oh yes, of course. Ballasting, you know, is the, you know, like that. Yeah. And it was basically where water goes in the ships and they dunk it, dump it out later on. Right. Okay. But there was like so many scientific words. And I was like, <laughs> he was the, the sodium hydrosis coloxide <laughs> oxygenation thing. And I was like, all right. But, <laughs> and you know, the hard thing about that is that you got to do a thing called line reading where they're paying you to get this right first time. Yeah. Mm. So the first time I see the script is when I go in there. Yeah. And mm. I'm sure that was that the same for you with Pop Team Epic? No, it you got to see not. it beforehand? Uh, with Pop Team Epic, I got sent not only the script about three weeks before I went in, yeah. but I also got a CD with Fuck. the actual visuals. That's so like I could, amazing. That's so like I could practice best. ahead of time. Man, and that's, apparently that's normal in the anime industry. Man, that's that's just like the Japanese trust system. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, like, it's like, we trust that you will not leak this. That, that just sounds anywhere. like a leak waiting to happen in any other I industry. I didn't sign a contract either. <laughs> what? what? Yeah, they you just, just got sent this without an NDA? They, they just sent it to me hoping that I wouldn't leak this. Bro, I, I, I can maybe count on my hands the amount of time I received the script before I got there. Like, yeah. It was like, never. Really? Yeah, and so I would get the script in front of me. I'd maybe have two minutes to quickly go over it, mm. but they immediately expected me to like nail it first time. And again, there's words I've never even seen in the English language <laughs> that come up in these scripts, okay. right? Like, I don't know what these words are, but yeah. I'm expected to like nail it whilst I'm also reading it for the first time. <laughs> And that's what they're paying you an absurd yeah. amount of money for. Like, I, I know fucking people who run like official discords for like Bandai or something who have to sign NDAs. Yeah, I'm and right. Here, and, yeah. and here you are just actually voice like blown away. Get, get, getting the entire yeah. script before. Here's episode nine, six months before it comes out. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> no, it was crazy. crazy. Like I, I got it in the mail. They didn't even tell me they were gonna send it because I was also assuming that I was going to see the Go script there. and everything yeah, yeah, when yeah. I got that's there. That's normally how it is. Yeah, 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 right. That's what I heard D- as well. Dubbing do that as well. Yeah, but, yeah, it's yeah, the same with dubbing. That's what I heard. But not only that, but when I when I also cameoed uh, in the uh, Grisaya Phantom Trigger uh, mm. game, yeah. they also sent me the script like two weeks beforehand as well. Wow. They didn't send me the visuals, but they sent me the script, like the physical script. Yeah. And wow. I had to go in with I, the physical script. I think the difference is normally in the Western industries, they're still editing the script like the day of. Yeah. Like so normally the script that you get might not even be the final draft. Might the one that you're recording. Also people don't trust anyone in the that West. Too, which, yeah. which is, which is- <laughs> Of, of course, you know, this is this is the country the where you can leave like your fucking laptop in the middle of a diner, go to the bathroom and then come back and just trust that nobody's gonna take it. Yep. You know, I, I, yeah, I, I just wanted to leak the boke stuff. I don't, I don't even care. I just wanted to leak it. No one cared, but I just wanted to leak it. I'm, I'm kidding. Don't tell anybody, but they use sodium hydroxide chloride. <laughs> yeah, man, it's crazy. But I mean, you know. Did you uh, get paid well for the boke thing though? Oh yeah, I got paid really well. Oh yeah. But that's yeah. like that's like the voice actor's dream is, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do it for the money. I just did it cause it was fun. Yeah. Um, well that's, yeah, same with me. Like, cause I, I feel like people who go into, especially like the anime industry to who wants to be a voice actor, they do it for the passion. You, know you I mean? get paid nothing for those sessions. I mean, maybe unless you're a SAG actor in yeah. LA, you get paid a decent mm-hmm. amount. I think it's $250 minimum right. for a session, two yeah. hour session. Um, but yeah, it's, you get the notoriety, which allows you to do a lot. Yeah, right. Anime, yeah. I don't know, cause I, I feel like nowadays there's less notoriety in like big voice acting names, yeah. in dubbing at least than, than they used true, to be. True. Um, there used to be cons, right? That's what you wanted. Yeah, 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 exactly. But now like, if you, even if you get to voice a dub in like a huge, huge show, there's like, you, you still don't get as much notoriety as like say, um, back in like the mid 2000s, we had voice actors like Steve Bloom, Johnny Young oh, yeah. Bosch, mm. Crispin Freeman, who just like, those those like the AAA yeah, yeah. voice actors. Everybody knew who they were. Yeah, 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 exactly. But it's it's a lot harder in this climate and industry just because there's, there's so many dubs now. You know? yeah. And, yeah. and everything gets sim- like, if it's on Funimation, it's probably gonna be simul dubbed. And everyone watches anime in like very different ways now. Mm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like like even even going back to Japan Sinks where I, d- I didn't know who any of the voice actors who voiced in this anime were because I was like, I was literally switching between dub and sub depending on which one I like to listen to. Mm. Um, because I feel like the voice acting 
for dubs in general has has gotten to like a passable quality that's or, great. in almost every show like mm. there there are there are some shows that are like oh, this is this is just a funny dub <laughs> you know but <laughs> for the most part if i want to just shut my brain off and just listen to the language that i want that I speak, then I just I'll just put on the dub, and yeah. I can I can, I have the trust that it will be a, like a decent experience. Yeah, dubs have definitely gotten to that point. Now. Yeah, yeah. There's there's certainly no like '90s quality like hilarious dub. No, no, no. No, no. no yeah. Which is why yeah. I feel like the whole argument of sub versus dub is kind of like but mute at this point. I, I yeah. feel I, I feel like the counterpoint to that is that there are less dubs that just stand out now. Yeah. Cause I, f- I think of some of my favorite dubs, right? Something like Bacano yeah, best or something, dub ever. you know, mm-hmm. Cowboy Bebop, mm-hmm. you know, the, these are dubs that stand out. Like literally like I, I remember how good they were just cause of how they're quality. But mm-hmm. nowadays I don't know. I can't think, I can't think of like many dubs that literally just, okay, this, everything's good. Everything's of decent quality, but I can't think of anything that like truly stands out as yeah, yeah. this is a dub experience. To me, the last, I think the newest, the newest quote unquote anime where the dub was like, wow, was probably Panty and Stalking. Yeah, but that was like 2008. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying newest in air quotations, <laughs> right? It's, it's how the industry was back then, right? You had like two weeks to just cast people. Like right. you had two weeks just for that, let alone everything else. Yeah. But now yeah. it's, you've two weeks to, not even two weeks, like one week yeah. to yeah. cast, translate, and get these actors in the booth and yeah. get yeah. recording. Like it's, you you can't expect anything good to come out of that. You, mm. you can, we get the good products, right? It's yeah. decent, but we're not gonna get anything that blows us away for yeah, I th- I think the, last, the current industry. The last dub that blew me away was probably Steins Gate. Cause yeah. mm. it's, I, it, it was one of those shows where I actually, I could appreciate the work that went into translating and just scripting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not not just like the voice acting, but like everything was just really polished. I, I believe that was scripted by J. Mike, Mark was yeah, the yeah, yeah. Playing the oh, main. really? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which, which is which is why he absolutely killed it. Uh, uh, Kiyoma as well. So like, because I, th- I think with the era of simul dubbing, it's just it's a lot harder to recreate that same quality and that yeah. same hype because you, they they just don't have as yeah. much time anymore. Mm. I also think, as, at least for Funimation, I think when Sony took over, I think they restructured a lot of it to make it less focused on giving uh, writers time and more giving like getting the whole thing out sooner. Yeah. Mm. Which, you know, is understandable, I guess, but also at the same time, you kind of lose a bit of that magic that, you know, maybe a dub would be, whoa, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Actually, here's here's a question for you, Joe, because you, you, you could probably judge this the best, but ever since the beginning of time, there's always been this debate of subs versus dubs, you know, <laughs> the Japanese, yeah. Japanese voice acting is always great. Has there been any show or any anime from your experience that yeah. is just bad voice acting from like a Japanese side of things? <sighs> Man, that's hard to say because at least with voice, from my understanding and my experience, at least Japanese voice acting in anime yeah. has just had an insanely high bar to jump over. Oh now. no, yeah. Uh, even ever since, even you know, I, like I could obviously go back to you know an anime from the seventies, oh, yeah, 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 and probably find some bad voice acting there. But that's because it was a medium that was still getting refined since the sixties, right? Yeah. But I think honestly, every anime I've seen since you know the late eighties, early nineties, mm. I don't think there's been a maybe there's been like one or two bad voices or one or two maybe like underqualified yeah. voices compared mm-hmm. to everybody else in that same show. But I wouldn't say there's an entire show that has like bad voice acting because- in the same way that there are bad dubs. And yeah, like exactly. But, but, and I don't know, maybe that's like a cultural thing. Maybe well, it's just- I think it's cause they've set up a system here that ensures they're getting voice talent, right? Yeah. Like yeah. They have schools specifically for voice acting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. We don't really have that in the West. Nah. It's you go to acting school, and then maybe you stumble into voiceover, right? If that's what you like. Right. Yeah. Uh, there's not really a system. But their entire, you know, like four year university. No, right, exactly. Like, say yeah. you it's it's here, the same right? reason why like Korea are normally amazing at esports. They have the infrastructure there to mm. support like making this talent. Yeah. yeah. And you know, in Japan, obviously you they've been having those schools for a while where the yeah. bar is getting pushed constantly and constantly. Oh yeah. yeah. Whereas it's not really like that in the West. Exactly. Yeah. And and you know, the, the great thing as well with the structure of, at least with the Japanese voice acting in anime is that if there is a new voice actor or actress that comes into the industry, they usually start them off with very, very small roles. Yeah, Maybe yeah, like yeah. one line or even just background noise to kind of, get them used to that environment and give them as much experience as possible. And then maybe after they do, you know, 10 roles of playing 
you know, person passing behind the mm-hmm. main character yeah, yeah. after the tenth time, then they can give them a role where it's, it's a very like, Japanese you know, reception. Yeah. Here's, here's two more lines. Okay, the next one will give you five lines. Yeah, the next one yeah. will give you ten lines, and then it just builds yeah. and builds from there. Unless if it's someone that just has insane amount of talent from the get go, and yeah. they're just confident enough to put them into a show, and then they make a name for themselves. Because yeah. yeah. some some of the best dub performances have been from actors where they're like they weren't acting in any other animated shows. Oh no, yeah, I I, th- I think. I think um, I think Johnny and Bosch like stumbled into his first dub yeah. role by accident. Um, mm. I think same with Steve Bloom as well. Uh, uh, yeah, I think so. From yeah, what I, 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 if I it's, it's been a while since I heard the stories. Uh, like both but, fantastic yeah, voice actors yeah. as well. God, I think oh, was the guy who did Light in the Death Note dub. He did a lot of the Ocean dubs in Canada because he did like yeah, because he did Rock from Black Lagoon as well. I think he was doing mm. My Little Pony before. <laughs> Really? <laughs> or he did it after. I think yeah. he did it after, but before that, I don't think he'd done anything. I know yeah. the guy voices Lad Rousseau in Bacano. I hadn't done any anime. No, no, I, m- I remember a lot of like back then, a lot of the voice actors who voiced in Bacano was like, that was like their first role. And yeah. Like, oh, they, wow. Everyone fucking killed it. You know, yeah, it's, yeah, it, was, it's really it was a lot of unknown voice actors uh, and actresses in that in, in that show. Great show. Yeah. Question to, to you, question to you guys then. With So with the ridiculously high bar that Japanese voice acting has, mm. What are what are some shows that e you know that even stand out for you with like the Japanese voice <sighs> talent and voice acting? I'll, I'll tell you the show that stands out to me most recently, yeah. and that's B Stars. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. B Stars has absolutely like insane voice acting, that, and, it, and, it, and it's yeah. very different because it doesn't it doesn't it didn't sound like your typical anime kind of voice acting. It mm. sounded very grounded and I very don't know realistic. who the voice actor for Legacy is, but his his yeah. acting was, was so, so good. good. Yeah, like Legos, really good. Legacy and Lewis. Yeah. Yeah. It was like the, they both had like the voice acting performances of that year oh, in any anime. Easily, yeah. easily. In in my in my opinion. Like even even with shows like Attack on Titan 3 coming out that had mm. some great voice acting, I still think B Stars was just like just a cut above the rest. I think it's just because Beastars as a show was just a cut above the rest. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Like it was just such a fucking amazing show. <laughs> I'm trying to think of any Japanese shows that really blew me away with voice acting. Jojo. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my man Dio kills it every fucking time. Like you, that perform. I, I spoke about this before. Like his performance, like yeah. as Dio. Like I'm not memes aside. Like it's yeah. fucking amazing. Oh like, yeah, he's, he's fucking great. And, and like, everyone in Part Five, I would argue as well, has oh, yeah. fantastic voices. I yeah. think I think the thing with Japanese voices as well is that they can just do cut. Casting so well. Oh yeah, they get it. Yeah, like they understand how important casting is for a character. Oh, I'm working on a video right now, and like I watched the clan ad dub, and there's just mm. one scene where a female teacher is just voiced by a dude. <laughs> what? <laughs> really? Like, yeah, yeah. Like I'm, I'm, I'll. It's. I, I we obviously can't show this, but I'll show you guys later, and I'll. Um, I mean, this is why I didn't watch it dub. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's just like a scene, and I watched it dub, so I don't remember this. But I watched <laughs> someone sent me the clip, and I'm like, that's just a dude. Going, Hi, boys. Like, how are you doing? It's like, what? How did this pass? <laughs> I, I mean, know. there was a lot of weird things that happened with dubbing back in the day. If we're going to talk about bad dubs, you yeah, know what exactly. I mean? That's a lot. We, we, you know, we, we have to talk about, you know, like ghost stories I mean, and stuff like that. Ghost yeah. stories, is that a bad dub or is that- It's, just... it's so bad that it's good no, dub. People, people always ask, cause when I when I tweet out being like, hey, I'm going to fix bad anime scenes for a YouTube video. People yeah. always be like, yeah, fix ghost stories. I'm like, what is it to fix? There's nothing yeah. to fix. There's nothing to amazing. fix. It's fucking great. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, it's just cause, t- I, from what I've heard about how Ghost Stories came to be made, it was Ghost Stories just sold horribly in Japan. Mm. Yeah. So when they licensed it, oh, licensed it over, they were like, yeah. "Do what you need to do to make this sell." <laughs> yeah, like do we, we, you have there was full some creative there was some control. Rules. Yeah, there was some rules, but you basically you basically had full creative control. And from what I heard, like they were just the voice actors would just try to rush in the booth first mm. and they would just like ad lib the scenes yeah. and everyone else would have to like play off what they said. Yeah. It was like the first abridge. Right? Yeah, 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 essentially. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, it's it's weird to think, right? That dubs back in the 70s were done where there was no email. Like, mm. how, how did they do this? They were literally, <laughs> a guy was given this DVD and they just kind of made it and, they just and the Japanese, it out. Japanese yeah. just hoped they did it well. Yeah. Like, you know, it's weird, right? To think there was- Even like, then it was a trust system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. weird. Like, they, just, they were like, I guess just take this DVD and yeah. go home. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, v- VHS, yeah, VH- Betamax. Yeah. D- D- like, <laughs> DVD, what, what, what existed before yeah. DVD? Yeah. Uh, like, take, this, take this cassette. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> laser disc? Yeah, laser disc. <laughs> <laughs> no, laser disc never took off in the West, but it was Japan, right? No. Like, God, yeah, no, it's weird. But even, th I think that's also why some dubs now are a bit strange because they were still done on that system where if you go first, you yeah. dub it, and then the person who comes next has to dub, but they get to hear just your character who's been before you. So right. yeah, whoever's yeah. last normally is the easiest time. Right, yeah. but and, and that because they have to kind of go along with, oh, they performed this character in this way, mm -hmm. so I kind of have to do it the same. But if the first one sucks- It's a bit <laughs> unfortunate, because I think it makes this weird kind of feeling sometimes by accident, but mm -hmm. this is again why a director should be on top of that shit. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's, what, that's why like the, the director has control over how this sounds. Cause yeah. there, there are definitely some dubs where it definitely sounds like people aren't having a conversation. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. I've always said, I think a director's job is like 10% to get the best performance out of you. And like 90% yeah. to make sure everyone sounds like they're in the same world. Yeah. Mm, like that's yeah. the hardest part. Yeah. Cause you're constantly thinking like, okay, yeah, that was a great line, but does it fit with what the other person just delivered? Yeah. Like I need mm, to think about that. Yeah. Um, and it's a really hard skill. It's, it's hard. It, it, yeah. it, it's definitely hard because you have to be on top of what everyone is saying and how everyone sounds. And it's it's definitely like you you can definitely see some of the nuances that people don't normally think about. But if you if you play a conversation and it's just like man, these people just sound like they're reading lines to each other and not actually having a conversation. <laughs> and it's really it just sounds yeah, it's that uncanny valley. Yeah, you know you, it I mean? sounds like they're kind of talking through dimensions. You know what I mean? It's yeah, like yeah. one's living in one world and the other one's living in the other. <laughs> Well, then the, the rift just happened to open up where it's like, oh, hello. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> hi, Mark. <laughs> God, man, I, I could sit here and talk all day about dubbed anime and voice acting and all that, because obviously, obviously that's what I'm cripplingly addicted to. Oh, yeah, I love yeah. that shit. Apparently man. not music. Yeah. Not music. Man. We gotta get this boy on some, like, we, we gotta make him understand emotions I, music. I, I, I never I, thought I'd say that. <laughs> I just, I wish like, I wish Kevin was here. I wish Kevin was like guessing in this I'm one sure episode. Kevin can convince me, but like- this is, No, like, no, no, I just, I just want to see his reaction <laughs> when you were just saying all this stuff as a fucking composer. Want, Kevin, <laughs> if you're watching this- I want I want you to just like, if, Ke if we ever get Kevin on the show and we will get Kevin on the show, <laughs> just, I want to just hear I'll the conversation- look him in the eye. Uh, I want you to dead ass look him in the eye and just be like, Made in Abyss soundtrack made me feel good. I'll do it. Just dead ass look him in the eye and just be like, I don't remember any of your music, <laughs> but it made me feel good. Yeah. I heard it. I heard the sounds. I mean, I, I feel like I have the opposite brain to like a composer though, in like every aspect. Like when I talk to Kevin, mm. I feel like I'm on like the, the complete opposite <laughs> mind of, in every way. It's crazy. It's so weird. I think I just have that that kind of mind that isn't isn't like that. I, I mean, if we can't even like relate to, it, we're not exactly mm, composers. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like you're you're very musical though, right? I like, mean, yeah, but I'm uh, I'm no Kevin Pinkin. No, no, right. But you have an appreciation for music, something yeah. that I don't have. Yeah. Right? Right. I I can't make music. It doesn't make sense to me. Mm. I don't understand any of that. Like I tried to learn drums as a kid, and I was like. Yes, this just doesn't work. With well, do, my you, head. do you follow along with like different anime directors and like? If you said their names, maybe. So but if I said Hosoda Momoro, no. <laughs> if I said Shinkai Makoto, yes. Okay. Your name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know that one. Wait, you don't know Hosoda Momoro? No. Who's Have you never seen Wolf Children? Wolf Children. Summer Wars. I've seen Summer Wars. The Digimon movie. I didn't watch the, who the fuck watched the Digimon joke? I'm, I'm gonna piss The Digimon movie was joking. fucking I'm joking. awesome. I'm joking, I'm joking, oh I'm joking. the joke. Don't kill me. Uh, yeah, I watched Summer Wars and- Boy and the Beast. Boy and the Beast. I watched- He also did a One Piece movie. What's the <laughs> jumping through time or something? What's that? Oh, the Girl, girl, left, girl through who left Through Time. Yeah, what's yeah. that one? He also, did you know he also directed the Samurai Champloo opening? Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. He, he also directed a One Piece movie as yeah, well. Yeah, One yeah. Piece movie six, I think. That was such good fun. I know. Movie, sir. That was fucking great. I love it. Did you watch the Digimon movie when yeah. you were a kid? Yeah. Do you remember the soundtrack for that? Yes. That had fucking bare naked yeah. ladies. Uh, yeah. And fucking less than Jake. So good. <laughs> Fat boy Slim. <laughs> like, what, what was this soundtrack? It, it just, was screaming nineties. <laughs> like it, it had. Do you remember that scene with All Star? It had fucking All Star in it. What? Yeah, I'm, I'm totally serious. Yeah, I'm Smash totally, Mouth. He had Smash Mouth. How, how did they get these rights? Because it was back in the it was like back in the day of like '90s movies sound. It wasn't like they had a completely different soundtrack from the Japanese 
release. Yeah. So when they when they like dubbed it and westernized it, they put all these like western bands. I, I couldn't because I watched the Japanese movie first, obviously. But then yeah. I went to a friend's place and he only had the dub for it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, I've never seen a dub, so I might as well watch a dub. And then when I heard Smash Mouth, I was like, <laughs> is did, you guys playing a prank on me? <laughs> did you overdub this with Shrek? I, I, I want to now just watch this movie just to experience Shash, uh, Shash Mouth. Well, Smash Mouth and Fat Boy Slim. Yeah, oh, yeah. dude, hearing Fat Boy Slim, I was like, what? That must be so surreal. <laughs> no, it was because I, I didn't realize how special it was when I was watching it as a kid. But now growing up, I, I think back and I realize, man, this was a really <laughs> weird soundtrack. It's like turning up to a to kindergarten. They've got yeah. Coke on the table. It's like, like, <laughs> all right, all what, right. What, what Fat Boy Slim song was it? it uh, I, 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 right I, here, right now. Was it, it was that one? Or You're, was it Weapon of Choice? I think it was Weapon of yeah, Choice. Yeah, it was Weapon I, of it Choice. It was Weapon of Choice. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Just hearing Weapon of Choice in a Digimon movie, yeah. I was like, <laughs> You just hearing Fat Boy Slim like takes me back ten years. I like, fucking love Fat Boy Slim, dude. Fat Boy Slim's fucking great. From Brighton, by the way, as a, as a born and bred Bright oh, Brightonian, yeah. yeah, from my from my hometown. <laughs> Damn. Do yeah, you any any famous people from where you're from, Connor? I think there was uh, Lost Prophets that band, but then I think they were like pedophiles. So <laughs> we quickly uh, quickly were uh, abandoned that one. <laughs> I think it was a band called, yeah, it was called Lost Prophets. And I think they were Lost like a, a fucking, I don't know. They were like, kind of like a knockoff of uh, like some way. Of, I, I, th I think I remember Lost Prophets. They uh, were like the rock band that like was like British Fallout Boy sort of ish. Kind oh, of, uh, like Panic ish. at the Disco yeah, kind yeah. of vibe. Mm, a little more rocky, I think, but yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, I, I was actually, I was watching a new anime recently. Have you guys heard of The Great Pretender? It's I have heard of it, yes. Song? No, 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 okay, okay, okay. The anime, but, the anime. But oh. the, there's, there's an anime called The Great Pretender. Fucking, I've only seen the first three episodes. Okay. It's like a Netflix exclusive anime, mm. but it's, it seems like it's it's fucking great. It's, oh, it's, I it's, saw a preview for that. I want yeah. to watch that. It's it's a heist show that sets in America, okay? Yeah, heist. Yeah, exactly. You're like, the, when you think of heist show and anime, I think of Loop, Loop on the Third, right? Yeah, but yeah. This, I can't think of many other heist shows, mm. but they actually, the ending for that song is The Great Pretender by Freddie Mercury. Oh. Like, oh, shit. You, he was, wow. I remember watching it, I was like, wow, who, oh, who is this? This kind of sounds like Queen. <laughs> and, I saw, and I see it's the actual Great Pretender by Fuck, Freddie Mercury. How did they get that? I know, right? I know. I, I sometimes wonder that because there's there's a few anime series where they've gotten Western songs. Yeah. Right? Like, um, what's what's uh, Paradise it, Paradise Kiss? Uh, had Franz oh, Ferdinand. Had Franz Ferdinand. As their ending. Yeah. Yeah. Did yeah. they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Paradise it had, Kiss. It had Do You Want To by yeah. Franz Ferdinand. No. Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 it's in. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, you know, like, Ergo Proxy ending was Paranoid Android by Radiohead. That, yeah. And uh, Eden, Eden of, the of the East, East had Oasis. Oasis. Yeah, that was fucking surreal. Yeah, but that was like, such oh. a good opening, yeah, though. Holy shit. Eden of the East opening as someone. That was a great show. That was a great show. That was a really good show, but the opening to me out of everything stands out the most. Oh, it's yeah. Probably one of my favorite openings of all time. You know, you know, I'm in a, you know, we're in a good mood when either Gun or I, I put that on karaoke, <laughs> which is like, oh, let's go, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Such a good song. I love no, it. No, it's it's great because these are like the songs that I could put on on a karaoke and just pretend like I can, you know, this sing an anime, anime song. This is an anime <laughs> song. <laughs> I'm a weep. I'm a weep. I like a weep. Was, yeah, like when was the last time that an anime had like a Western song in it? Like before <sighs> Great Pretender, was it? Was it Ogo Proxy? It might have there's, been one of those. There's been a lot. There's gotta be some, but we don't know. Yeah, yeah I, I don't know if there's like, I can't think of my head like how many um, actual, English songs because there's there's been Japanese songs or there's been Japanese bands that have sung English, you know what I mean? But yeah, in, t in yeah. terms of actual pure, here is like a Western band who who is just got a got a song in the. There was also that anime from like the early two thousands. I just remember that there's had also a Duran Duran song as the opening. Oh yeah, there was. What the fuck was it, that? That was what? there was that. It was the camera one. The camera one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah. the fuck was it? Yeah. It was, it was Girls on Film by Duran yeah. Duran. Oh, I forgot. Canon? No, no. no. <laughs> Speed Graffer. Speed Graffer. Speed Graffer. Speed Graffer yeah. had Duran Duran. Oh. And like opening. Serial Experiments Lane as well had this, that had this like really weird, unique British indie bands that yeah, had- Yeah, Duvet. Yeah, Duvet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 What the fuck? That was a Con Connor's just sitting here being like, what's what's going on? I've watched like half these shows and I'm like, oh yeah, they did have that. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I just forget. Like, How could you forget? Cause I listen and I'm like, oh, that's cool. 
<laughs> I'm gonna keep forgetting on with my day. Do, do you skip openings, Connor? Mm, after one watch, after one one opening view, I'm like, unless it was B stars, I watched it every time. Yeah, yeah. Like, that shit was like, whoa, let's. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Okay, what I mean? okay. Yeah. Actually, actually, actually yeah. very specifically, then, do you ever? Okay, do you ever notice that moment? in any anime where it's a really hype scene and they play the opening song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. As, yeah, yeah, if course. you notice that, then you're not, you're not completely brain dead. You're not, not completely brain dead. <laughs> I'm that's like, good. cause that's like saying the name of the show to me. That's like, <laughs> it's, 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 it's like, I loved like, I don't know why it always works, right? But it, no, it, it's hype. It's, it's hype. You, you, you play the opening song in any hype scene and it just brings it from like a 10 to a 20. You know? <laughs> no, no, it does, it does. It's, it's pretty fucking hype. I mean, they're about to pop off. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 or like so you, you know you know shit's gone down when it's the end of the episode and like the end the ending song Before starts finished, playing yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. and you're like oh shit shit's about to go down shit's about to get real got, like PTSD of the Anohana song always <laughs> playing and I'm like no 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 I, I had that with uh, I had that with um uh uh, fucking Shinsekai Yori, when the fucking uh, when the chorus starts, oh, you know, yeah, with the yeah, kids, yeah, yeah, yeah. every time it like every episode opens with that. But then there are a few episodes near the end Is where it, name? it kind of play, yeah from the future world. Oh, it's like really good. It's okay, ten okay, out of ten okay, for me. Ahead. But yeah, the the opening that so that series didn't have an opening. It just had like this chorus of kids just going <laughs> ah. <laughs> I was about to say like sarcastic. Yeah, I really like the opening to that. So that's, <laughs> yeah, that's the opening. I really love. Uh, Run I circulation. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Hey man, that's a great opening. No, okay. I, I remember, right? I watched, cause I, I downloaded uh, all of Back in Monogatari and, and all of whatever the fuck. Yeah, yeah. I watched them all. And I remember I, I listened to Run I circulation. I thought, wow, that's a fucking tune. Yeah. And I went to find it. And I thought, man, am I the only guy who likes this song? <laughs> Found out like two hours later, literally everyone loves this song. Yeah. And it made like the meme compilations. I, I'm going to give a hot take though. It's not my favorite Monogatari opening. Uh, Pla uh, platinum, platinum, platinum Disco. Platinum Disco. Yes. Platinum Disco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Platinum Disco is yeah. really yeah. fucking no, That like, fucking dance is yeah. like. <laughs> <laughs> So but like, good. But like I, I feel like Monogatari has like so many banger opening and endings oh, yeah. as well. It's Even the first opening of Bakemonogatari. Monogatari. Yeah, yeah, Staples. Yeah, that, Staples. That was yeah, like- That's a great fucking song too. Did Dorohe Doro change the ending every time? I don't know. I, I, I know Beastars did. did. Beastars changed the ending. I think yeah. Dorohe Doro did as well. And they were really? all really fucking good. Yeah, because with, with the Monogatari series, it was the first time when I noticed they were actually changing the endings yeah. like to every arc and every, yeah. every, every arc had a different ending. And I thought that was like- Every arc had a different opening as well. Yeah, that's true. I, yeah. I thought it was like a really nice touch. Yeah. Like li little things like that. that, that Monogatari Polish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, cause I know there have been other series that have done that, but I can't think of any off the top of my head. Uh, There's a ton I'm sure, but I need to write shit down. I think that's what I've taken away from this episode. <laughs> how did the music make me feel? I should write more than one word. I would, I would like a thousand word essay on oh how God. music in anime makes oh, you Jesus feel Christ. by the end of this episode. No. <laughs> I'm gonna give a presentation on why I like yeah. music in anime. This is why. <laughs> it's like seeing, seeing you process, try, like try to process how music makes you feel. It's one of like <laughs> the most eye-opening moments I've ever seen. For you as a friend, just like I'm looking forward to the memes. Of this, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna get so many sea dog I'm, I'm, cyber I'm, memes. I'm ready to get fucking roasted by the viewers of this. Yeah, episode, but it's fine. I know I, I, I big brain in some things, monkey yeah. brain in others. Big you know. brain in chess, goldfish <laughs> brain in music. <laughs> yeah, is there combined a... this combined with the fucking video game episode. Where... <laughs> I'm gonna be like, ev literally everyone's gonna think I'm a I don't like listening to music. I don't want to read. <laughs> I just want to play chess. <laughs> That's Connor in a nutshell. Yeah, I guess, what the fuck is going on with my brain, man? Yeah, it's I don't know. Weird, it's eh? weird, man. Yeah, is there anything else you guys want to talk about for this episode? I don't think so. Yeah. I think we've, we've kind but of- But here are topics. the lovely patrons on the screen yeah, right now. Thank you very much episode. to the patrons for helping us support this. Shout out to those guys. Those are great guys. <laughs> those those guys are my favorite guys on screen <laughs> right now. These are my favorite How, how do those guys make you feel, Connor? Yeah. How do the patrons Good. make you feel? <laughs> <laughs> Sad. Happy. <laughs> also, if you want to stick around and uh, figure out what we're doing off YouTube and Spotify and whatnot, then uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at yeah. Trash Taste Pod. And we also have a subreddit where you guys give us plenty of dank memes. We, we, yes. we always check we the always subreddit. Check we, the always subreddit. Check we always check the Twitter. So uh, at, this, at the moment of this recording, it's just full of chess memes. Yeah, lots oh, of yeah. chess fucking memes. Great. Lots of great fucking fan art as well. Yeah, we've a lot been of people getting. wondering how we record our episodes. We're a little ahead at the moment, but yeah, that's we because uh, we're eventually 
going to travel at some point. Yeah. We hopefully. need to get a little backlog going. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm the boy, and thank you <laughs> for watching this episode of Trash Taste with the two other boys who have been Boy two me and boy three. They I'm... make me feel happy, good, and I've been man. <laughs> man. Thank you very much, man. <laughs> Thank you, man. <laughs> What's wrong with me, man? What's wrong with me? My mom's going to think, what happened to my boy? I what kicked her. <laughs> Join us next episode where we teach man how to make fire. <laughs> <laughs> Literally going to turn it into, what's that channel called? Where they like prime- Pr Primitive technology. <laughs> Primitive music featuring Connor. We're going to teach him the xylophone. <laughs> we're we're just, it's going to be our goal just to see like the evolution of Connor as this okay. podcast goes long <laughs> from like from like caveman to like sophisticated humans. Here's what's gonna happen. Next time I watch a show, I'm gonna make note of the soundtrack and how it makes me feel <laughs> in more than one line. Yeah, more than one word. Yeah, uh, yeah we'll see you guys next time. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> My God. <laughs>